thing, which I shouldn't have done. Uh, like the level twenty riding, <laughs> which was a mistake. I, th I think every I think it's work. I don't know what that was about. I don't. I don't like literally don't know what happened. Uh, it's the but, same same link and everything, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, just every, yeah, same every, link, same yeah. Link. Everything's the same, and everything like just booted up instantly. Then, yeah, as in kick went live straight away, no messing about. So yeah, I I, I have no idea what that was about, but we're good now anyway. Hi guys. Yo yo yo. Sounds like we're just a little hiccup then. Yeah, yeah, a bit bit strange, but we're here now. Uh, six minutes late. That's still not that bad for us, even with whatever. It's early. For whatever some just shows, happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad at all. How's everyone in chat doing? Good, hopefully. How are you guys doing? I'm doing Fantastic. great. Yeah, doing pretty good. It's the best day of the week, dude. It's Druid talk. Yeah, this should be a good one. I'm, I got I've excited when this. I. I got excited when Goes just like, oh, we're going to have a Druid talk. I'm like, ooh, cool. It Show happens once, once every eight months or so, we, we have a little Druid talk. Well, I have a feeling this might turn into two Druid talks. You know, like, we, we're not doing a season of Discovery episode this week, so we could, even though it's Druid deep dive, we can, you know, even if we cover all the basics and every, all the changes and, you know, like, do as much as we can... As I say, like if we can do it in a couple of hours, because I've got a raid, I'm letting the team down. Uh, we could then pick it up on the normal season of Discovery Day um, and do part two, and exactly the same guests, and we'll all just crack on and then maybe get more into the weeds. But we'll see what we can get done. We want to keep it nice and on on point, so we're like not really going to do much fluff, um, and I'd say pretty much get more or less straight into it. But we will still just go around the table. Uh, briefly like druid experience and you know are you playing a druid main in kata etc etc so i mean go you can kick that conversation off why not yeah i have been playing druid since uh 2019 in bwl in classic that was the first time i made a druid and actually leveled it up all the way and i haven't looked back since i haven't leveled another class since then i had a mage and a rogue but those sat at 60 tbc launched and it was just druid 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 from there and so i have no kata druid experience other than the, the private server last year i leveled up to 85 i did like one heroic dungeon that was pretty much it i've been leveling up on the beta i'm level 61 right now and it's pretty different than the private server was there's lots of bugs right now so I swear, felt... I swear you're the only person in the guild that seems to be leveling backwards. Every time I look, it's like, oh, he's like <laughs> he's lost another two levels. <laughs> yeah. It's felt really weird. Like healing is bugged and mana regen is bugged, and that's two big things for balance true. It's like I'm constantly oom um, having to sit down and drink. And I, when I try to heal myself up, I have to go through like half of my mana bar just to top back off. So it's been a slow journey. Uh, Feral on the beta is probably leveling leveling a lot faster than uh, than Boomy is, but yeah, I'm I'm coming around to some of the changes from Wrath into Kata for for Boomy, but there's some things that haven't really hit just right just yet. So there's some good and some bad. I'm I'm happy to be here to talk about both. Cool. Um, let's go. We'll go with Bear next because uh, first time on a podcast, I feel. First time on this podcast. Oh, I've oh, been yeah, on yeah. podcast with Go on and Griff before. Like that was what, eight months ago. Um, I've been playing Feral since 2019 BWL as well. Um, and right now I have two druids. I'm going to be working on a third for Kata, maybe a fourth. I haven't decided too much, but they're all going to be Feral. So, um, been playing the beta, and I'm level 80 on there. So Feral's just two shotting things half the time. Um, it heals absolutely suck. So, I mean, getting in between packs is a lot harder, but it's still there. Cool. Uh, and Table. Yo. Um, yeah, I started playing Feral, uh, like Druid in general, um, during Vanilla, but didn't raid during Vanilla, didn't get to 60 during Vanilla, and then main swapped partway through phase one of TBC. And I've been playing uh, Feral ever since then. Brief stint as Boomy in Tier 6. Uh, and then back to Feral when the Feral that we had stopped playing. Um, but I've been Feral the whole time. Started as a warrior. 
Oh, I think Discord. That. Discord just froze up again now. Yeah. Oh, did it? Yep. Yeah, it was only Discord. Just literally Discord. Other, but yeah, carry on. Weird. Uh, but yeah, my my past playing a rogue and warrior, it feral felt like a pretty natural switch to it. It's like a combination of all the stuff that I liked about both of those things, plus being able to off heal and stuff like that when necessary. So I don't know, Drew is for me having played multiple different things uh in other classes also outside of that as well. Drew just feels like the most uh complete version of what I want out of the game. So that's why I'm maining Druid and Keta. Cool. Um a Mave Druid, yeah. I mean I've I, I am not currently a main druid, but uh always always played a druid at some stage or another, uh literally since two thousand and four. Uh, all through classic up until Raph, I was a druid, uh, and then changed to paladin for Raph, and I'm changing to mage for Kata. Um, but yeah, obviously I've got I I extensive uh, experience from all all druid specs in pretty much every expansion up to Legion. Um, it, it sucks not not being druid main anymore. You know, like I, I do often consider going back to druid, but I feel like I've kind of done it so much now that it is really nice going into classic like new classic expansions as something different you know i, I love raf doing it as paladin on both eu and na uh, i don't think i would have got the same enjoyment out of it doing it as um doing it as uh, yeah as feral just purely because every raf private server that's ever launched my main's been a feral druid you know uh, and the same with cat yeah, like, nice yeah first one's always been a druid uh but yeah so it's going to be good. Yeah, we've got a, a lot of druid knowledge, definitely, between the, the four of us for various specs and various expansions. Uh, go, the chat link should be working now. That was my fault. Yeah, yeah, it's working now, yep. Um, and just as a pre-warning to everybody who's watching, or, or even the VOD when you're watching it back, uh, that we uh, there's been some Discord issues. Obviously, there was the disconnect issue completely at the start for whatever reason, but yeah, Discord occasionally seems to be freezing, but Go said, obviously, I've just got off of another podcast, and Go said it was doing it on there as well. Uh, so we'll we'll just have to bear with it. Occasionally, it might be a, a little bit dodgy, but we'll just do the best we can. Uh, right. So we've got to be really on point and and like crack through a lot of topics when it comes to druid. So I need to scroll up through the chat. Uh, so we'll start with an overview of each spec. Uh, with like new abilities that are relevant for each spec. Uh, what the mastery is for each spec. Um, you, you know, and, 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 and sort of. Not the leveling experience as such, but you know, like is Boomy good for leveling? Is Feral better for leveling? Like you, you know, you might have a resto off spec from level thirty onwards to maybe do you know the the odd dungeon as a healer. Um, so go. Let's uh, let's start with you. I'll go on to another screen so we can see the actual talents. Uh, and and like talk to us about balance. So the balance mastery, the balance. Yeah, obviously start what starting ability that you get when you go balance and yeah, how it all comes together. Yeah, so you get the uh the choice to pick which spec you want to have at level 10. So you start off level one with your wrath cast, that's it. There's no mark of the wild low level, there's no nothing. It's just you have wrath. There's no healing touch, which we used to get when you, we would make a tune in wrath. Uh our mastery we don't get until level 80, but our mastery Increases our bonus damage from Eclipse by 16%. It was 12 in an earlier patch, but by the end of Wrath, it was up to 16%. So we should see the 16% for, for this. And we get Eclipse uh, at level 10 if you choose the Balance Tree. You get Moon Fury and you get Star Surge. So Star Surge, 40 yard range, 15 second cooldown, and it does Spell Storm damage, which will generate 15 solar or lunar energy. Uh, and you build up your energy. Once you have 100 of either of those energies, you enter Lunar or Solar Eclipse, and that's going to buff either Arcane or Nature damage. Um, so the Spell Storm damage, I looked up, you know, what exactly is that? So I'm going to read off a little paragraph here really quick. It is a multi-school uh, combining the Arcane and Nature schools. Multi-school abilities benefit from bonuses that affect any of their schools. It'll use the lowest resistance value among their schools, ignore absorption and immunity effects that apply to only some of their schools, and can be used even when one or more of their schools have been locked with an interrupt effect. <laughs> I feel like you said so schools like, so much. 
I know. <laughs> I, I should have pre-read that and figured out how to like reword it a little bit there. But if you get locked on Arcane, then you can still cast like your Star Search because it'll just use the nature part of Star Search. So it's kind of cool there. Sometimes there would be mobs that were like rocks that would be immune to nature damage or something like that. But Star Surge will hit that because it'll be using arcane damage. So it's it's a, the first time that they introduced this for, for Druid to have some sort of Spellstorm damage. So what we'll do uh, is a, 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 once we go a little bit deeper into each spec, um, I will go balance and show people the, the actual Eclipse system. Uh, but the best way to picture it for anyone who's not familiar with how the Eclipse system works is it's like a pendulum. You're, you're working your way towards Luna, and then you're working your way towards Solar, uh, and you just go backwards and forwards. But the, it, it, it might sound easy, but it's actually not. And go, you're going you're gonna to find out how frustrating it can be uh, at level 85 when you're using mushrooms and you're presetting mushrooms ready yeah. to do massive AoE, but you need to be in the right Eclipse state, and then you want to be in the right Eclipse state to use Starfall. Uh, you, you know, it's like the timing required on a boss by boss basis as a balanced druid actually I, I think it's quite overlooked you know everyone always says like you know feral dps is one of the hardest specs to play and don't get me wrong it, it does remain that way even in kata um but i think balance you need a really really strong understanding of the spec and the the, the encounter to, to get those oh, yeah. timings right and the eclipse uh up until you get your mastery is going to grant you 25% extra arcane or nature damage so then you'll get the additional 16 percent baseline and then each time you get an extra point of mastery it'll increase it by two percent yeah cool all right and then feral um let's have bear or oh, bear, bear or bear or table whichever one of yous want to talk about the level 10 feral stuff one of yous can do feral yeah. one of you can do resto we'll make table do resto because he's a uh, he's a, <laughs> a horrible, <laughs> horrible person who's playing Resto Druid in Sod. Yeah, so Bear, talk to us about yeah, Feral. Sort of uh, off the bat, you've dinged level ten. What's it looking like? I got Moon Fury. Oh, so you ding it. level ten. Oh, hang on, he's got. Hang on, go right still. Hang on, Bear. Go still wants to talk. Fuck me. Go sorry, on, go. Sorry, sorry. I was course, trying to. I was course. trying to get Moon Fury out there really quick because we only had Star Surge, Moon Fury, and Eclipse to talk about. So Moon, Moon Fury, Fury used to be a talent, right? Yeah, you used to mm -hmm. have to go pretty Moon deep Fury in the was... balance tree for it. It was five points. You got 2% extra arcane and nature damage. Well, it wasn't even arcane and nature damage. That changed. It was like damage for Wrath, Starfire, and Starfall or something like that. And that was only the base damage of the spells. Now it's 10% arcane and nature damage. And then it increases the critical strike bonus damage of Wrath, Moonfire, Starfire, Star Search, Insect Swarm, and Starfall by 100%. And that was also kind of a previous talent and now it's just going to be baseline so your crits will hit for 200 percent instead of 150 for all those spells and now i'm done sorry to well, uh, interrupt so, you so, so now this, but... now now i'm just going to go off on a really mild tangent not a long one just a, like just a, a, a short tangent <laughs> uh the the so mastery what you were talking about go you know the fact that like it increase like just base baseline mastery when you learn it increases the bonus damage of eclipse by 16 percent so that's like 16% extra damage from every ability you use while you're under the Eclipse state. Now, I, I dinged level 80 on my mage and obviously instantly started doing my professions, doing everything. I didn't even go to a trainer because it was like, well, I'm not going in dungeons. What's the point? The, um, the, the difference at level 80. So this is for everybody, every class. It's not just relevant for Druid. When we go in the pre-patch and you go to your trainer and learn the mastery ability... The difference is mind blowing. As in, I was killing stuff. I specced fire, and I was running around killing stuff, and and you know grinding for different mats and stuff. And I was like, I should really go and learn my mastery, shouldn't I? And learnt mastery, and then things just started melting. You know, it's like m most most classes' mastery is so big, even just at baseline with zero actual mastery on gear. Uh, that yeah, it it's actually quite an exciting mechanic. Yeah, you know, your class is balanced around mastery and cataclysm, really. Like every spec is balanced around mastery. So when you ding 80 and actually get it, it is uh yeah, it's pretty special. I just wanted to throw that in there. But bear, go on, feral. <laughs> As the bat, you get mangle. So that's pretty big uh 
just ability instead of you know having to use claw all the time um and you also get your aggression which is nice more for tanking but the 25 percent attack power you get from that is still pretty big especially at the lower levels um then if you ever go into bear form which you don't get until after you hit 10 anyways um you get vengeance for tanking which increases your attack power based off the amount of health that you take um and it's a 10 percent of your total hp that turns into attack power um you also get feral instinct which just reduces the chance of mobs seeing you while you're prowling and eventually when you hit 80 you get your mastery And the mastery is pretty big. So, yeah, mastery is huge, especially for cat. It allows your bleeds to hit harder, and then as you get more and more points of mastery, your bleeds are just ticking and ticking, and they're just doing lots. Um, depending on like what you're doing. So, Rainbow Kitty is the is the things for you. It's so painful with Discord keep freezing. I don't, I I, I, I don't even know what <laughs> it froze there when you was talking again and it's like uh this is really awkward yeah it, it just yeah. lagged the whole yeah. time you just yeah, said that yeah, yep. again, it was not too, yeah. Um, but it was oh, weird because i was i was looking at the cameras and go and table were moving around absolutely fine uh yeah very very strange i don't know what's going on with discord tonight i, I have a feeling it's their servers and not actually anything else because yeah it's just strange mm-hmm um but yeah bear did you mention anything about the uh the bear mastery while you were while things were locked up there no no i didn't i only did the cat mastery so the, oh, okay. the bleeds the rainbow kitty but then bear mastery is when you get crits you get a savage defense which savage defense is a physical shield that you gain and as you get more mastery for that it just increases how much you're absorbing Yeah, it's like it's similar to the savage defense that we already have. It's just now the mastery. It's the mastery now. That's all it really is. Instead of it just being a yeah, passive, yeah. it's just a mastery now. And you and can then, get disgust in the big shows. Scaling, yeah. Instead of it just scaling with your attack power, it scales with mastery too, yeah, and it can get ridiculously. I actually think yeah. like at having tanked on yeah all all the classes at one stage or another in Kata. Um, but like bear tank feels so good, like going in dungeons, you know, as in like doing five man heroics and going in in full DPS gear. So you've got like a, a shitload of mastery just naturally anyway. Like the amount of damage that you absorb, like you will be out healing healers, you know, with the amount you're absorbing. And obviously, yeah, DK DK does that slightly better, but still, as a bear, being able to do it is, yeah, pretty special. Yeah, and as as a bear, because I've done a couple of private servers that I've just leveled on just to see the experience and to get a little bit more background to try and do some stuff for Feral. But tanking, you just you don't really need different gear for bear. Yeah, yeah, you might want to like switch gems or something like that. But like, well, uh, it's literally yeah. When gear. when you get into the harder heroics and everything, yeah. but if you're just doing the normal ones, you can go in there and just fly straight through them as a bear. It does not matter. Yeah, for sure. And the good thing is, like, with reputation gear as well, you know, like, if you buy, like, so yeah. Avengers of Hydra, when we're in Firelands, you know, and you're buying a cape, it's like, well, yeah, you'll, you'll maybe not cape, belt's a better example, you know, you'll buy two of the same belt, and you'll gem one with stamina, and then, like, one with agility, you know, so, that, like, there's, there's certain places where you can get easy gear, where you can just get two of them anyway, and have one for, one for when you're tanking, one when you're DPSing, but quite honestly, the majority of the time, if you're off tanking, you're not going to put on full stam gear anyway, because it's just not needed. Well, you'll have a couple pieces here and there, and you'll be mostly a DPS build, because when you go to taunt, like you're going to be in bear form. You're going to be chunky enough. As long as you've got enough mastery, your shields are going to keep you up for the longer times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's like, I know for, for me personally, I'll probably end up, because like, I'm probably not going to be main tanking, but I do anticipate having to do some tanking. It's going to be like taunt swaps pretty much. And then like the occasional fight where you have to tank full time 
for the fights that you tank full time, yeah, you're gonna switch into like your actual tank gear. But for the taunt swap fights, now nah, you're fine. You just pop a cooldown if you yep. need it. It's whatever. Yeah. Well, especially since survival instincts changes too. Yeah, yeah. I think it's still a talent I, though. Yeah, but it's, it, 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 but it's, it's actually a damage reduction now. Yeah, but it works more like yeah. shield wall or like divine protection than last stand now. Mm, yeah, which is huge. You know, when you've got yeah, that and a, then you've got bark very skin. big difference. Yeah. Uh go on and go on and table. Tell us about your favorite spec, apparently. Resto. <laughs> Like the hell. Um <laughs> Resto is is definitely still a raid healer in Kata, although just like always, like you could tank heal as a Resto Druid, it just wasn't the best at doing it. Um, but its toolkit has been more reinforced with more AoE healing, um, which is I think probably Blizzard finally admitting they're like, okay, these guys are raid healers, not tank healers. Um, at level 10, when you pick your spec, you get Swift Mend right off the bat, which normally you would have to be, uh, you, that was an, a talented ability that you had to get through talents before, but now you just get it kind of the same thing with how Mangle was where like, instead of having to go like pretty far down the tree, you just get it at level 10, which is nice. Uh, the passives are nice. You get meditation, which is the one that allows, uh, 50% of your mana regen from spirit to continue while you're casting. Uh, which again used to be a passive talent, so that's really nice that that is just uh, a passive now. Uh, Gift of Nature increases your healing by twenty five percent. Pretty straightforward with that one. And then Disentanglement is the last passive. Now this is one of the big changes about Druid for Kata that a lot of people don't realize until it doesn't like work for them. They think the game is bugged <laughs> right now and previously, like in Wrath and TBC and Vanilla shapeshifting cleared roots and snares now in kata it only clears snares and you have to have you have to be resto spec and have the disentanglement passive for it to also clear roots so baseline druids don't don't dispel roots or don't get out of roots just by shapeshifting it's just snares it just slows but as a resto druid you get out of roots and snares uh passively because of disentanglement Unless you're a boomkin on the beta right now, which is currently bugged, go. Yeah, so <laughs> I swear, like, the first week that I got in there, I was getting rooted, and I, I wouldn't be able to shapeshift out. And then yesterday, I was getting uh, web-wrapped by spiders, and I was able to shapeshift out of it. So I don't know what has happened, but I hope that uh, I continue to be able to shapeshift out of it, because I think that's a bullshit change, and... Uh, Resto Druids have an unfair advantage over all the other specs. Nah, I told I him mean, to do his job, but he didn't end up doing it, so I did it for him. Yeah, I didn't report <laughs> that as a bug. I was like, nah, 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 this is working as intended for sure. I feel like there's there's like so many opinions on the on the whole like Druids having the best escape thing. And it's like for us, it feels bad to not be able to get out of roots anymore because we're used to being able to do it. But like if any spec of Druid is going to be the only one to be able to get out of roots by shapeshifting, I would think that it should be Resto because they're the ones that get focused in PvP the most often. So, like, I feel like it's better. It's it's hard enough to heal battlegrounds in PvP in general. Like, if any spec is going to have an easier time with it, I think it should be Resto. Yeah, and it's and it's kind of um, like. It's not advantageous uh, as much uh, as it is in, let's say, Wrath. Because in Wrath, let's say you was running around healing in tree form, all you're going to do is cancel tree form, and now you're out of the route. Whereas actually in Wrath, you're, as a resto druid, you're never in a form outside of cooldowns. So now you have to physically go into bear or go into cat to break it and then back out yeah, to heal. Yeah, you spend a GCD on it. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's still massive. Like, it's great that you can do it. But yeah, it's not as simple as now where you just cancel tree and then go back into tree. You've actually got to go into bear or something and then... Um, but yeah, so m- minor inconvenience, I suppose. Uh, but... Speaking of tree form... Well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that because I've got something really interesting um, to, to, uh, about tree when, when when we get there. But what about the mastery first for Resto Druids? Um, so the mastery for us, or let me pull it up so I can like actually read the exact thing. Um, where'd it go? What the hell? Uh, oh, there it is. All right. The mastery is called Harmony. Uh, your direct healing is increased by an additional 10%, and casting your direct healing spell is a grand. 
it's frozen again. Increases each of those bonuses by an additional one point two five percent. So yeah. it's leaning it's leaning into the um the hot play style that druids have been known for thus far, um, but also basically giving you a reason to cast your direct healing spells. And we did a little bit of checking up before we went live here, and these spells that trigger that bonus to periodic healing, the direct healing from Swift Mend, Healing Touch, Regrowth, and Nourish all counts to uh I think uh, I think we might need to restart this difficult. initial heal from regrowth. Then gives you an additional ten percent for the rest of the hot for regrowth, which is cool. Can we just really quickly just try and restart this disc call? So like uh, everyone drop out, and then I'll start the call again, just to see because you froze up so many times then, and you froze up again. Oh my god! You, yeah, you just did too, Scotty. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, um, just just disconnect, like, and we'll start it again, and just see if that fixes right. it. Because we're we're having big Discord issues at the moment, and I just don't know why. Um, so it's it's very strange. But I I have started the call. Bear with, bear with. Uh, we'll see see if it's any better now. I mean, is is the stream lagging too for anybody, or is it just the Discord? Like anybody that's watching, is there the was a Discord update yesterday? Up or... uh, it's only Discord. But no, the, the the stream seems fine. I, I've got Kick and YouTube open, and and both are fine. They're not buffering. It's just literally Discord. Did you because do the Discord when because when when you freeze up, obviously my camera's being captured. It's not Discord cam. My Discord cameras. You know what I mean? So. Like I'm not freezing. Yeah. I'm fine. I can carry on talking while users just they're frozen saying ah. nothing. So it's definitely it's a hundred percent only Discord. Um Weird. This Discord has yeah, a server of potatoes. Uh but anyway, like back so on resto, um the the really good thing about the mastery is actually how the healing style changes as resto in Kata. So where at the moment, like for example, in Raf, you you know you're trying to use Life Bloom with clear cast in Prox because it's expensive, and you then get mana back when you're then casting it for free. Um, you all of like you'll be you'll you'll only ever put life if you're a good Resto Druid, you'll only put Life Bloom on a tank once, and that's it. You know, like three stacks, you'll get it onto three stacks, and then that's it. Uh, because every nourish and healing touch that you do will refresh it. So, like, you always want to be using a direct heal anyway. So, like, keeping Harmony up is almost like... It's always up. Because you're always going to cast a heal at least just to refresh Life Bloom. Then, yeah, maybe you're, like, wild growth in, throwing a few rejuves around, and then another, um, let's say, another nourish on the tank to refresh his, um, his Life Bloom uh, and rinse and repeat. So it, it all synergizes. It harmonizes really well. All of it together. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> thanks guys for joining us here. That was the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I am so proud of myself right now. Don't take it away. I can tell. Um so yeah, it, like Resto, I've done a lot of Resto. Um with McNulty who's in chat, me and him have um two healed like all of Firelands, uh just, like with him as a disc priest and me as a resto druid. Um, which what a weird combo. How weird does that sound? A disc priest and a resto druid. And honestly. You get someone who can play resto. Um, you don't need a tank healer. Like you, you know, you really can. You can tank heal and raid heal. Mana is no issue. Almost, I would say I have more mana issues on a re uh, on a holy paladin, strangely than than I do on a resto druid. Um, it, it's really strong. Like resto druids. Uh, if you like a resto druid, you're in such a good place for cataclysm um so yeah and loads of cooldowns yeah like mcnulty said like it's an amazing combo the amount of stacks we could push on um on major domo it's not major domo but yeah fandrel uh in firelands where you stay stacked there's a bit of a cheese strat where you'd stay stacked for as long as possible but it requires massive healing and like just between me and him we had enough raid cooldowns and enough healing output where we could get the boss to about 30 percent or something before we even needed to worry about mechanics like it's resto is so strong. I can't stress enough how strong it is. But tell us about tree table because once you've told Already. us about how the tree changes, uh, I've got a really interesting blue post from Ghost Crawler from 2010. 
Oh, that'll be fun. Um, all right. So, yeah, currently in Wrath, starting in TBC and in Wrath, uh, tree form was like tree life was just another shapeshift form that just you had all the time. In Kata, it turns into a cooldown. It's a three minute cooldown. And when you enter into this cooldown window, it increases your healing done by 15%, increases your armor by 15%. Um, you're immune to polymorph, just like how you would be in other shapeshift forms. And also, some of your spells are temporarily enhanced while you're shapeshifted. And those spells are Life Bloom, Wild Growth, Regrowth, Entangling Roots, and Wrath. So pretty interesting cooldown that you can use for not just healing. It's a it's a useful cooldown for, for just dealing with mechanics and stuff as well, and in PvP too. I'm curious to, to find out about this blue post. Uh, okay, so what what it actually is is um, I'll stick it on the screen, but it is quite it's quite lengthy. Uh, but I just want to touch purely on the the bit about tree, tree of life. Uh, so it's quite funny when you read through all everything about the history of tree of life because it was out of every change in Kata, the the zones changing the uh the you know every class is mastery all of that. Resto Druids went mental at losing Tree of Life. Like, as in Blizzard had to start going through and deleting posts in the Druid um, the Druid section of the forums because there was just so much debate on, oh, this is a good change, or this is a bad change, or, you know, like, I'm not playing Kata because I can't be a tree anymore, and all of that. You know, there was, like, so much around the fact that it was now a cooldown rather than you could just be a tree all the time. So I really liked their their reasoning for it, uh, which is more what I wanted to point out than anything. So basically, I'm not going to read it word for word, but what they've said is it felt quite punishing as a druid to to lose so much utility and offensive um, ability by being in tree. You know, when you're in tree and like there's certain things you can cast, certain things you can't cast, uh, that... It, it felt almost unfair that they had to have a specific form to like only to be able to be on par with other healers. So the reason they changed it to a cooldown was so it, it so that you're in your normal form and you're as good as every other healer without having to be in a shapeshift form, which then limits the other abilities that you you can use, like your utility and and yeah, offensive abilities. Um, to the point where actually. There was things that didn't make it into the game. When you read this blue post like in full, what they wanted it to be is like when you use the cooldown, it would even show your armor. So the tree would be wearing it would show the armor that you're wearing on the tree and stuff. You know, so it felt re like a lot better than you just go really big and turn into a tree. Um, like there was things that they wanted to do that clearly never actually made it into the game. Uh, but that was the whole reason. That was what I found interesting, was the whole reason for actually turning it into a cooldown, which makes sense, is the fact that for you to be like a viable healer, you had to be in a form to be able to do it. That was it. Yeah, the, the balance druid part there is kind of neat too. Looks like Nature's Torrent kind of got shifted into Star Surge, but then yeah. it also didn't have the slow tack or tacked onto it. So yeah, this was like pre-patch for sure when they were talking about this this this, this, this was the original beta this was the original beta, yeah, yeah, for, the beta yeah. for, for cataclysm um and as i say yeah i've looked for all this and there's a lot of things that did and didn't make it into the game but there's a lot of justifications for druid changes in here uh, and the and the tree of life one was the one where i was like actually you know what whether you love it or hate it the fact that you're losing your tree of life form and it's now a cooldown it absolutely makes sense you know, why should you be limited by what abilities you can and can't use just to be able to be a, 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 an equal healer to a priest or a paladin or whatever who don't need to be in a form? Didn't uh, Tree of Life and Wrath at least have like a movement speed reduction on it? So it was like you moved 25% slower or something. That was, the, that, that, was TBC. that was only TBC. Oh, TBC. Just TBC? Yeah, okay, in, okay. in Wrath that was removed. Okay, yeah, cool. Because, yeah, I didn't see that anywhere in the, the Kata stuff either, so that's that's neat. They can... It, it, since it's on a cooldown, never mind. Let, let them move, waddle a little bit slower in their tree form for 25 seconds. But for those that I are watching, that like this is what the new tree actually looks like. 
yeah, it turns you into a really, really big, ugly tree. It would have been nice to have seen... It's a glyph that makes it look like the old one. Yeah, you can have the old glyph tree in. I think the thing that's cool, or the thing that makes me think that it's, like, a good change is, like, of the... Of all the healing classes, Druid was the only one that didn't have some sort of healing cooldown. Um, like I, like Manatai Totem, I guess I for the purposes of that I would count as like a healing cooldown. Um, but all of the other healing classes have some sort of cooldown that either reduces their mana cost or increases their healing done or something like that. And Druid didn't have that. It's just so like nature it's, swiftness, I guess, but yeah, that's not really. I, I guess, yeah, but like for as far as like a, a duration thing that like is impactful that can like change a fight, like Druids didn't have that and all the other healing classes did. So I think it's cool that Druids get one now, and that's what kind of makes me okay with the fact that you don't get to be permanent tree form anymore. Yeah. And, and the fact that when you're in tree of life, yeah, oh, obviously like, that's what I was saying about life bloom earlier, where you keep life bloom on the tank, you know, because you can only have it on one person at a time. So you're. You're constantly then using a, a direct heal to refresh it, which is great because it's extremely mana efficient. You know, not having to recast Life Bloom, you're doing a direct heal. Um, but then when you're in Tree of Life, you can then spam Life Blooms on everyone, which then procs more instant cast um, uh, bloody regrowths. You know, so you're just going like Life Bloom, Life Bloom, regrowth, Life Bloom. Like the amount of numbers you can put out when Tree of Life is up, like it, it's crazy. Go, go and fuck. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Were you like on the motion capture team for honestly? The, no, the thing is, the like, movement for the tree form. It, it, it's been a while, um, you know, since I well, it's been a, a good few months since I healed on a druid last. And actually, talking about it makes me remember how much fun it actually is. It's definitely, it is a lot of fun. Like, I, 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 I could main a resto druid in, in Kata comfortably. It's kind of crazy how much difference there is with like the base, you know, quote unquote normal healing style, um, and what you get from talents. Like the, the all of the talents in the resto tree that affect all of the stuff that you do, the way your spells work and everything. It's it's crazy how different healing on a druid is as resto versus not resto. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like pretty much before before Kata, you could heal on a on a druid more or less the same way that you would just like without wild growth essentially you'd pretty much be doing the same thing it's just slightly weaker but it's like a fundamental gameplay difference being resto spec versus not resto spec it's kind of crazy yeah well i mean that i'd say that's a, a good overview of you know like what what you get as in you know when you when you go whether you go resto, um, feral, balance, whatever. Uh, the, the good thing is if you actually look at our aspect at the moment, um, and Lee specifically in chat wanted me to mention this, um, is the fact that you're kind of lucky if you play a druid main because you can do everything with dual spec. So yeah, you can't be balanced as well, obviously, but you can go feral and you can take everything that you need to tank and everything that you need to DPS in one spec. So you'll have one Feral spec that you can tank as good as any other tank, and you can DPS as good as any other Feral DPS Druid in one spec, and then you can have Resto off spec. So now as a Druid, you can have dual spec and literally fill any any role. Um, and fill any That's role as good as I someone kinda, else. I'll eventually probably end up doing that, um, depending on like the needs of the team and everything, of course. But like, you know you can slightly optimize any spec really like you could go like a more bear centric feral spec and then a more dps centric feral spec but you could totally run like a hybrid tank dps as one spec and then healing for your off spec and yeah like you said literally be able to do anything with just a gear swap yeah it looked like resto could also do a little bit of dps weaving kind of like in sod how it's like a hybrid healing and dps like a couple of the talents like uh Fury of Storm Rage, and then there was one at the very top of the talent tree that like buffed Wrath, uh, Blessing of the Grove. Oh, it buffs Moonfire. So it's like, is is Resto doing a lot of like off damage too? Like, yeah, there's nothing else to apply my hots on right now. I'm gonna throw a couple Wraths out to do damage, or you, uh, you could, yeah, you could. I mean, uh, like, there's certain times where I would, 
as in on like uh, Chimeron, for example. You know, when Chimeron um, is on, when he enrages, no one can receive healing. So like that's a great time to pop Tree of Life and then start spamming Wrath. Because when you're when you're in Tree of Life and you spam Wrath, uh, it it reduces the cast time by fifty percent and damage increased by thirty percent. So rather than using Tree of Life at the end as a as a a healing cooldown, you'd use it as a DPS cooldown. Uh, I'll be honest with you, as a Resto Druid, I don't find as much downtime to do other things as I do. Like on a Holy Paladin, I'll be weaving in Crusader Strikes. I'll be judging. I'll be you know because Crusader Strike will give me Holy Power. So that's actually then going to benefit my heals further down the line. Whereas as a druid, uh, you, you are still setting up those blanket heals. You know, so even though no one might not be taking any damage and you could be like, yeah, I'm going to throw some rafts in. But, you know, in eight, nine seconds time, damage is going to come in. So you start putting hots out instead of doing damage. But I think if you're talking like try like you absolutely could use Fury of the Storm Rage and be a more offensive healer than may maybe I am. You know, it could work if you're trying to get kill speeds down and shit. It probably just depends on who you're healing with. Like, if you're going to solo heal anything, which at some point I imagine will be possible, like, obviously you're probably not going to have time to be chipping out on damage, but, like, you know, if you're in, like, a 25-man and there's not enough rate damage going out for you to need a blanket, then, yeah, you could probably contribute some damage during that window. Yeah. Yeah? All right, cool. Um... So what about if we move on to, as I say, we want to keep, keep this nice and sharp, get from point to point. Uh, this is normally you having to do this to me, go. Um, key changes to each spec. So again, we can start with balance. Um, and, and, and yeah, go. You, you can sort of start us off with balance. What, what do you feel are like the, the key changes, maybe new abilities that we're going to get as well? Yeah, we get uh, Star Surge, new ability, and then we also get, like, Sunfire. Um, Typhoon is the same as it is in Wrath. Starfall, I think, is the same. I haven't gotten there yet on the beta. I, I want to say that that's the same. You just get it at, like, level 70 instead of 60. Uh, we get Hurricane at a late, later level. That's not until 44. It was level 40. Uh, we get Moon Conform earlier. Like, you can be Moon Conform at level 29. That's pretty cool. The Eclipse system completely changes from Wrath. We've already touched on that a little bit. Uh, our dots can now crit. I'm not sure when that comes in because I've been playing and it, it's not yet. Maybe that's level 80 or something. Or I, I don't know when our dots can crit, but I've I've heard I've heard things. And some of the talent tooltips say that they could crit, like Insect Swarm, Moonfire. Do you know, Scotty? They 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 should crit and be affected by haste. Yeah, just just naturally. I don't think you need oh, so anything. For maybe that. they're just that might just be bugged. You just need more thing. crit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've seen one crit yet. I think I heard somewhere yeah, that dots were crit. bugged. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, they get affected by haste now instead of uh, having no haste value with them. Um, we get like a well, not bounce specifically. Let me see. I'm trying to uh, man, everything else is kind of like druid in general like innervate changes it's uh a lot weaker you need to really talent or glyph it for it to give anybody mana back thorns changes to a, a cooldown where you can apply it to yourself or anybody that you target like your tank and then it it does a lot more damage than the the buffed version like the 10 minute buff thorns did so that's kind of neat we still get force of nature we still get our treants uh talented mm, what else Fawns is great, by the way. Like, yeah, as a as a, yeah. a a tank, like as a bear, pop, popping fawns on you and then running in and pulling. Like, thorns is actually super super strong. We get uh, solar beam, so we now have an interrupt. It's uh, halfway down our talent tree, and it silences somebody for ten seconds. So the the play, if it's a mob that's rootable that needs to be silenced, you root and then hit your solar beam, and they can't escape the root to move out of the beam. So. You can kind of get max value out of that 10 second solar beam. And then we also get mushrooms like way down at level 80, I think, or it might be even be 85. It's really late. And then, yeah, you can plant your trees down. They can be able to snare targets. They can explode and deal damage. Uh, you can pop them before a fight starts. So as soon as the fight starts, you can detonate them, have some burst damage right on the start of the fight. 
And then there's some minor changes, like uh, Moon Conform is changed up a little bit. It used to grant armor, now it's just a flat 15% reduced damage taken. Uh, we give raid-wide uh, 5% haste. We can't shift out of roots. I'm going to complain about that as much as I can. Uh, and it's, what, 10% arcane and nature damage tacked into your moon conform, too. Mm, there was one other thing, I think. Lunar shower? I um, mean, lunar shower is sick, oh, man. For just running around spam spamming moonfire and uh, sunfire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is it? The The spirit thing. So we can talent into bounds of power and one spirit, like point, will grant you one hit rating. So it's it seems a lot easier to get uh, your hit rating now. You have two options, either hit or spirit. So I like that. Yeah, I think overall Boomy is in like uh, Boomy is a lot of fun. And as I say, uh, I I actually think it's a lot higher skill cap in Kata versus Raph, just because of yeah timing uh, and knowing when you should be using certain things and in in what eclipse state you need to be in to use them. Uh, but but things like mushrooms and yeah, being able to like chain slow stuff, you know, by but, yeah having the mushrooms leave like a slowing puddle of shit down behind them, um, yeah, it, it is just a lot of fun. And then what well, I guess another thing here, nature's grace also changes. It used to reduce your next cast by like half a second, and then now it's uh, you gain fifteen percent spell haste after you cast a couple of spells. And it lasts for 15 seconds. And you get it at 10. And the cooldown yeah. resets yeah. when you when you gain an eclipse. Mm -hmm. You enter eclipse and then it, it'll reset. So if you just got nature's grace or it's about to fall off and the cooldown's not off yet, then it'll yeah reset it and you can insect swarm or moon fire and uh, get that 15% spell haste again. And then that, that kind of goes with euphoria too. Um, once you get into any like a solar or lunar then you're restored 16 percent of your total mana and it took me up until like level 50 to realize that i was like man i haven't really been focused on my eclipse while i've been leveling up but now i'm like well that's that's a lot of mana back <laughs> so while leveling if you talent into euphoria then yeah make sure you're getting in and out of those eclipses to get that mana back yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely you, you can, you can level as a boomy with next to no downtime. Once you're, once you're in your, let's say thirties, you know, it, it, mid thirties, it starts to become a very, very viable way to level. I mean, it's viable from the word go. Don't get me wrong, but I, I'd still say feral is is quicker, which uh, we'll get onto shortly. Yeah, if you're planning on dungeon spamming, though, we we really don't get AOE until forty four. And then it's it's Hurricane. And Hurricane's not the best AoE, so... Uh, if you're open-world questing, though, I've always loved soloing mobs as a balance true. But there's there's not even that many elite mobs anymore. But you can still... If you run into trouble, you can root a mob and then blast something else down. Yeah, cool. I mean, I, I think, like, for, for sort of an overview in terms of, yeah, new spells, for balance, really... I mean, mushrooms are the biggest one. You know, like, uh, the abilities that you're pressing don't change that much from Wrath. You know, yeah, you, you've, you've got Moonfire, Sunfire, Wrath, Starfire, Star Surge, Starfall, and then mushrooms. Like, there's not really... It's not like you get anything massively exciting, but trust me, mushrooms and, like, use... It, so that's why I wanted to mention Lunar Shower, because once, once, you're, um, once you're in solar and you're literally just sun firing everything and then and putting mushrooms down and then blowing them up and rinsing and repeating. The AoE damage that you can put out as a balanced druid is actually kind of disgusting, especially if you can preset mushrooms so you get that burst straight away as well. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I really do like Boomy, but I do genuinely think that it's actually a lot harder than Wrath. I think there's a lot more buttons yeah. to press. There's a there's a lot more I think, timing to think about. That's the cool thing is that mushrooms are not like they're not balanced druid specific. Like ferals will be able to learn all druids get to learn mushroom. So like if you have restos and ferals in your raid too, like there's just going to be a giant cluster of mushrooms before every every fight start, 
and then as soon as the fight starts all the mushrooms from all the druids will explode at the same time and then the, the fight really starts it, it'll be the new hunter trap yeah pretty much yeah and the good thing is yeah once you've placed them they are invisible so they do yeah like you you know if you place them at a flag if you're doing pvp oh, let's, we can talk about pvp for once here um you know like you place them at a flag and then someone will you know run along and they they might be stealth and you randomly just blow your mushrooms up and take them out of stealth you know like it's yeah that they are they're a lot of fun and it's it's difficult it, it's such a weird ability you know it, it feels like such a weird way to aoe when you're you're using free globals just to place them you know and everyone's doing damage and they're climbing up the meters and you're not moving because what you're doing is spam clicking mushrooms on the floor but then when you do detonate them and you watch yourself go from like seventh to first you know it's like the, the damage they do is absolutely mental yeah i've i've looked up a little bit of like rotation stuff and they're like yeah you don't even hurricane like hurricane's not worth you uh you starfall and you you pop mushrooms and yeah. you uh you spam sunfire on every target yeah yeah that that is literally that is the play with luna shower sunfire in and just using mushrooms it is the, the damage is disgusting like i i went into a Ashen of Twilight heavily undergeared compared to everyone else when I dinged on the Druid. And yeah, well, on bosses, I, I, I was not top. But on trash, like, the only thing that could get anywhere near me was a hunter. You know, it was, yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. And I love doing AOE damage. I love doing trash damage. Table and I used to fight for top damage in like Old War and stuff. So like, I, I, I'm excited to have another AOE ability because Starfall. It was fucking sick when we got that in Wrath. And then now another form of AoE, hell yeah. It was one of those like competitions that like it didn't matter who won because we all win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We like, pop if in, you like... pop the fuck off, like if you completely just in, like melted shit, I'd, like I wouldn't be mad that I wasn't top. I'd be like, holy shit, that's fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. Like, we, we were popping potions, like pre-popping potions on like trash packs just to try to like out damage each other. <laughs> Or like, like I used magic. Berserk on that first double pull in yeah. uh, Vezix's room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go on to Feral. So yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm looking through, thinking like, yeah, that is, that that's pretty much everything in terms of new abilities, key talents for balance. There's not really a lot else we ain't spoke about. Um, so like Bear and Table between you, like obviously, you've probably both got a lot to say about Feral. Yeah, there's a lot. There is a ton for Feral. Um, we actually get a real interrupt uh, as Skull Bash now that is no longer on the GCD, but you don't really want to press it as a Feral because it feels bad to press, you know, an interrupt button. Just let the mages take care of it. They get a damage increase. Um, we also get our swipe a little bit earlier instead of getting it at 70 plus. So it's also a 360 for cats instead of a 180. So that's a really nice quality of life change. So instead of having to face all your targets, you can just sit in the middle of them. doesn't matter where they are. Um, Tiger's Fury gets changed a little bit to a 15% damage increase. Um, but because of that change, Savage Roar is now only a auto attack increase by 80% unless it's cliffed. Um, that is pretty much the majority of it for cat. Oh, wait. No, when you feral charge, you get a ravage proc, which then allows you to use ravage outside of stealth and no um, position requirements. So you can use it wherever. And you want to be feral charging straight into a boss and then using it when they're above 80% because you get a 50% crit damage modifier to it. It's good for stuff like um, I think it's it's good for incentivizing ferals helping out with like ads and stuff like that because you can feral charge to an ad, ravage it, and like if you crit with it because it's over eighty percent health, you kill it super fast, then you can get back to the boss. <laughs> yeah, Just, like little little stuff like that because like right now in Wrath especially like if there's a fight where there's any ads like Sour Fang for example, it's like the druid just tunnels the boss a like feral will just tunnel the boss because having the feral switch to ads is a huge raid dps loss on the boss so like this is i th at least i think the design like philosophy behind having that this be in the game is to incentivize not just tunneling bosses 
Well, yeah. you'll still want to tunnel the boss, though, because you'll lose the combo points on the boss if you swap targets, because Ravage does create combo points. Right. Oh, it's, it's, a, like, it's, a nice, it's, a it's nice on the painful. opener as well. It's nice on the opener to be able to go Ravage, Savage Raw. You know, literally straight away, yeah, you got your Savage Raw like, up with, with no energy cost. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like a boss where there's forced loss of uptime for whatever reason, um, and then you're able to hit the boss again, you can Feral Charge Ravage um, back in to, to restart. So just like little stuff like that, like forced loss of uptime is a little, a little bit less painful because you get a little tiny ravage window every once in a while. And just, just for, um, for, for Casey, yeah, you, you, for skull bash, you get, you get one of each. So you've got skull bash bear and you've got skull bash cat. Uh, obviously you, you'd just make a macro where you'd have both abilities on one button, but it is a one minute cooldown. That's something else that's worth mentioning. So by default, it's a one minute cooldown. Yeah, you can talent it down to ten seconds, but that, that that you know, when I said earlier, you can be you know a, a bear and a cat, you know, all in the same spec. Losing improved skull bash is one of those sacrifices that you'd have to make. Uh, which there's so many people that can interrupt. It, it's not a big deal. And then like a small thing because of the fact that we get skull bash, feral charge bear doesn't interrupt anymore. It's just a, a regular yep. old charge now. Mm, yeah. It still it still roots them, but it doesn't do the interact right. portion anymore. Uh, I'm thinking what else is for cat? I feel like uh, blood in the water. Blood in the water. New, execute, yeah, blood yeah. in the water is our new execute, which allows us to refresh our rip completely after the boss is sub twenty five percent by just doing any combo point ferocious bite. Um, as long as you're got both points into it, it does the full duration. And that becomes disgusting with uh, a tier set bonus where it actually starts working from 60%, which is like... Yeah, it's disgusting bonkers. with the Dragon Soul tier set. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's and execute like, from 60% nothing. And then there's like a kind of a smaller thing that we get like real early. Uh, Furious Wipes is like kind of overlooked, I feel like sometimes, where like this is one of the, one of the other reasons why Haste is like pretty good for Feral and, and Kata. Uh, it's a talent, three-point talent. Uh, when you auto-attack in cat form or bear form, you have a 5% chance because of Fury Swipe dealing 310% weapon damage. It can't happen more often than three seconds. So it's like the more the more haste you have, the better chance you have of triggering that once that cooldown window ends because the quicker you're swinging, you know, the... And, like, it's not the main reason you want haste, obviously. It helps a little bit, but, you know, with the, with all the other changes with the way that energy regenerates... Uh, at an increased rate when you have higher haste, stuff like that. Like there's there's multiple reasons that we actually care about haste now, whereas before it was kind of like just the last remaining yellow stat <laughs> that we could get. It was like the least bad one to get at a certain point. Now it's like actually something that is pretty good to get. I suppose another big one for what? feral would be um, the the loss of feral attack power. I mean that's 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 obviously it's very not... useful for people to know. Right, it, it's a pretty big loss, but all attack power basically goes away. It all gets changed to stats, like your raw stats for agi and strength, depending on what you're using. Um, but I would, I would think the bigger one for like a raid wide is your uh, leader of the pack. It's no longer improved for the entire raid. It's just yourself. Yeah, yeah. So when I said the loss of feral attack power, I meant more. The, the way that Feral is actually, like, weapon damage, well, weapon DPS matters for Feral now. You know, it's not like just getting a weapon that's got lots of Feral yeah. attack power on. You know, you, you actually want, yeah, you, you want higher DPS weapons. Yeah, because everything that you do, including your auto attack, scale off of your weapon damage now instead of attack power. Yeah, so so weapons are absolutely... Yeah, like yeah, massive upgrades, and on the most part, because um, it's a very it's very misleading uh, the way things actually read. So if you was to look at uh, let's say we look at shred, let me look at shred. Uh, it will say shred the target for four hundred and twenty five percent damage plus two thirty eight to the target. Um, no, maybe mangle. I need something that says specifically weapon damage. Uh, two hundred and twenty 
285 normal damage plus 100 and causes the target to bleed. No, where is it? I need one that says weapon damage. I think I think um, Swipe's the only one that says weapon damage. Uh, let's have a look at Swipe then. Uh, yeah, Swipe nearby enemies inflicting 340% weapon damage. Uh, so, yeah, that's misleading. Because by weapon damage, you know, if you think about warriors and, let's say, rep paladins... Uh, you know, it, it's weapon damage that you're actually looking for. You know, as in, you could have a, a, a weapon that's got lower, wet, like DPS, but it's got higher top end damage, which makes it better. But when it says weapon damage, it doesn't mean weapon damage. It means poor damage. So it, it, it's like the higher DPS of the weapon, the better, because it's actually going to adjust the min and max damage based on one speed, which you, when you're in cat form, you, you've got a one speed attack power. Yep. Um, that one speed attack. I mean, it one kind, speed it's kind of a speed. combination, almost. Like anything from other melee classes that you see weapon damage, it it works the same way that feral weapon damage does. Where like you have to open the character sheet and see melee damage on the sheet, and that's the damage it's working off of. The damage that you see on the sheet is increased by attack power. So like you know, it's not like if you get a Maladath in vanilla or whatever, and you you hit whirlwind, it doesn't hit for the exact amount that Maladath is. It's whatever that damage is, which is then increased by the amount of attack power that you have. Yeah. So it's like, but like, it's still confusing. Like that's definitely, it. it's because of the fact that, you know, your weapon has a damage range and then the spell is saying weapon damage. Like that inherently is confusing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, but the, the general the rule of thumb. Actually says that. Yeah. But they do all scale with weapon damage. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't mm -hmm. actually so, say that, but like shred, you know, is, uh, yeah. The, the higher the weapon damage, not weapon damage, the higher the weapon DPS, the more you're going to hit with shred. Um, but it is, yeah. It's definitely like a semantics thing, but like it matters. Like semantics matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because someone will go, hang on, this one's got higher top end damage. Like surely I'll use this because I've got a higher chance of doing more damage. But yeah, it's not. It's just like every every weapon, basically, the higher the item level weapon that you can use, the better. Because it's going to have more DPS. Like it's as simple as that. Uh, but it is something there was like so, so much debate for... A, a, a long time looking at the difference between the weapon that I've got equipped now, Rancer of Hatred, versus Fandral's Flame Scythe. Uh, and really, all that it comes down to is what secondary stats that you want. But then when you can reforge anyway, it's kind of irrelevant. You know, you go for the highest weapon DPS and then reforge the stats on it that you want. Um, was there can anything I else? Soft topic for a second? No. Just with the oh, yeah, with yeah, Fairy okay. Fire. Mm -hmm. So fairy fire is, has to stack three times now. A druid can do it in one. Thunder armor. Who can do it in one? A, a feral, a feral druid, can druid can do it in one. Feral yeah, is talent. one. Oh, okay. There's a talent that makes yes. you get three stacks talent, on the first application. So uh, feral, feral aggression. Feral doesn't mind doing it. No, no, yeah, yeah, you, you can do it in one. Yeah. Okay, because it also does damage for feral, and for for boomy, I I have to sit there. And it only it GCDs. does damage in bear form. And it bear, only does okay. damage in bear form. Yeah, in cat form, it's still unchanged. And there's kind of no, no, like, the, you know, you might have a warrior that, that's, yeah, like a prop warrior. You might have, uh, well, even, a, even a, honestly, even a resto druid. Like, as a resto druid, uh, I would, I would, um, fairy fire. Because who cares? Yeah, it's, it's, it's three GCDs, but it doesn't matter to me. It stays up for five minutes. Yeah, it's like right at the start yeah. of the fight, three yeah. fairy fires, uh, and then you, you almost forget about it until the boss dies. So, um, yeah, I, I like that. I like the fact that, yeah, it's just 12%. It's only 12% armor reduction now, but, yeah, it, it's all of them. Yeah, it, You know, you can't stack fairy fire with Sunder. It's just one or the other. Uh, or even a hunter's pet. Yeah, yeah. And... Yeah, no more, no more crying from the warriors either, or the rogues. Yeah, oh, they'll find something to cry about. Yeah, so fairy uh, fire they always doesn't, do. it doesn't give any extra bonus to boomies like it did in Wrath. I forget what it even was. I think it was like hit rating. Hit, yeah, yeah it, was, it worked, it worked the same as a shadow priest. Yeah, yeah. So now we don't have to really worry about it as boomy. So I'm I'm stoked. <laughs> um, but outside of that, uh, uh, main being a stun, no, it doesn't matter. I mean, savage raw changes. That I mean, that's that's a big change for feral. To be fair. Now, now that. yeah, now I only being that. auto attack damage. Did did you know that originally, um, so up until four point two, it was only fifty percent. It got buffed by thirty yep. percent because of the, how shit Feral was scaling. 
Yeah, I actually have all the patch notes for Feral like in a notepad. Yeah, I went and did all the patch notes. Good. I tried to do that for Boomy too, but Scotty threw me on a loop there when he brought up that Ghost Crawler post, and I had no idea that there was that other natural talents or whatever it was called. I was like, I I didn't see that, but I guess that wasn't really a patch note. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it's also uh, yeah, a, a lot of it's kind of irrelevant because. Yeah, we're going to be in a 4.3.4 state, you know, so everything that happens in between is kind of irrelevant. Like, all we're interested in is how are they looking in the final patch state. But it's nice to look yeah. at those those blue posts to see what their, yeah, philosophy behind some of it was. Um, yeah, and that, that's the only reason I look at them, just to, just to hear their clarifications around their bullshit that they do. <laughs> um, anything else? Uh Feral? Yeah, oh, a, a little oh, bit. Oh, not for feral. Well, wait, maybe it's feral, for feral too. Stampede in Raw. I mean, but yeah, it is for it is for just druids in general. Like Stampede in Raw is a big cooldown, and it don't even yeah, sound like, like a big cooldown. Runs, yeah, but like a run speed. It is. Yeah, it gives everybody in your group a run speed increase, and it's massive for getting in between trash, just getting to the next boss, whatever, whatever you want to use it for, and it also clears roots. So yeah. it could also be a, really good on some TBC that did a run speed thing that was similar to that. It's uh, a stampede in raw, though. But well, stampede in raw is but like used on many bosses as a as a raid cooldown. Which yeah, yeah you like it, it. Don't sound like it would be, but you know, Ragnaros is a prime example. Obviously, you all stack, and the boss drops seeds, and then he drops the seeds, and you need to move away from them before they blow up. That's not the I'd say traditional way of doing the boss is you spread for seeds, uh, but you know the 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 easy way of of doing it is you stack for seeds. The seeds drop. You have a druid stampede in raw, and you all run away from them, and then you'll rinse and repeat. So go will be first stampede in raw. I'll be second. Rinse and repeat, and it makes the fight a lot easier. Like there's a lot of fights where actually using stampede in raw properly is like m mega mega useful. Like giving your entire raid a sprint for eight seconds, like it, it's so huge. Yeah, and like we'll definitely see like the speed run meta will change based on that as well. Like going from boss to boss in a speed run, you're gonna want to have enough druids to basically just have full uptime on stampeding roar, gather all the trash, you know, do all the stuff you're gonna normally do. Just do it faster because you have stampeding roar the whole time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, but I would say that's probably probably yeah, a, about it for for feral. I mean, I've, I've got some some. That's just, that's oh, that's just cat. Yeah. How does how does omen of clarity change for for cat? Because it changes for boomy because it's only gonna make wrath, starfire, and star surge cost zero mana when it procs uh, clear casting. And then I I noticed too that there's a patch note that it's not going to make nourish uh, free, uh, but the tooltip says you know it's uh, your next cast time damaging or healing spell, but for some reason nourish does not apply to that. But yeah, like what uh, what abilities can ferals use that are free? Is it just all of them now? It, it's still all of them. Yeah, everything. Okay. It, it it doesn't stay um it doesn't unchange for feral druid whatsoever because it's still in the tooltip and it nothing for it changes the only thing that changes is we don't get a glyph currently in the beta should we get the glyph or do you, do you think they're just gonna like make that no i don't think the glyph will even be necessary no because like the um the fact like you just read like they change the 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 tooltip just a little bit. Uh, I think it's in the rest. Yeah, it's in the rest of the tree. Uh, if specialized as a feral druid, this is like the bottom part of it. If specialized as a feral druid, Omen of Clarity will also have a chance to occur from your auto attacks, which right now, the way that it currently works, it right now only procs off of auto attacks. So right. the Kata version of Omen can proc off of our specials and our auto attacks. So we're going to be getting a lot more Omen procs baseline anyway so i don't think i personally don't think it'll be even necessary for us to have the glyph the way that we have it in wrath because we're going to be getting a lot of omen and progs anyway 
And we're still going to be fishing for them with fairy fire because it can proc off of fairy fire. Fairy. Yeah, that was probably one of the big... I mean, it, it was supposed to have had a chance to proc off of fairy fire and, and wrath also. I don't know why it didn't, but... Um, but yeah, like it's still... It's one. It's it's still going to be... We're still going to be using fairy fire as often as possible, yeah, to fish for procs, but I don't think the glyph will be necessary because everything that ferals can do will be able to proc omen. Is it still like Mark of the or yeah, Gift of the Wild too? That can I still proc it? So like no, pre -pull Gift of the Wild no. can't. Yeah, I don't think Gift is on the list. Uh, it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't anyway. So it, it's it's dig rat six removed. seconds of pre pool, and then you fairy fire dig rat, so you have your omen proc. Flaw. I mean, you no, you flow. just feral charge in there and get a ravage, and then that way you don't really need the omen of clarity. Like, you get the free ravage proc anyway, so might as well use it. Um, oh, that, yeah, that's go? uh, well, no, it, I was looking for the talent, and I've just been looking for about the last two minutes trying to find it, and it was the last one I looked at. Um, so yeah, for resto druid, I was like, hang on, what, where, where is the talent for um, for, for clear casting? Uh, obviously, yeah, as a Resto Druid, you go two or two Malfurion's Gift, which then gives your hit, uh, your life life bloom as a 4% chance each tick to prop clear, uh, to cause Omen of Clarity as well. So, it, obviously, without being Resto, obviously, heals will not proc it. But, yeah, if you are Resto, then it does. And that's what I was saying about when you're Tree of Life. The more life blooms you've got spread all over the place, the more clear casting procs you've got to then instant cast regrowths. Uh, that was it. Yeah, just to throw that in as well, just in case anyone was wondering how how resto benefits from moment of clarity. Um, yeah, you have to have it talented. Um, uh, next, uh, I I suppose uh, yeah, uh, fer yeah, feral tanks. Do we do we want to talk about some some feral tanking? Tanking changes a lot, and by just the fact you no longer get dire bear form, it's not a thing anymore. It's just bear form. Everything that dire bear form gave you, it's all encompassed into just the one form. Um, you have a chance of proccing berserk without being in a berserk state, which gives you a free mangle and it resets the cooldown of your bear mangle. Um, there's also Enraged that got changed to no longer increase physical damage taken. It's just you get more Rage during it. But if you're talented into uh, one of the talents, you get the 15% damage increase from it still. And I believe that's uh, King of the Jungle. Yeah, King of the Jungle. Gang, yeah. It gets it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, swipe was changed to a three-second cooldown. Maul was changed to, I think, a four-second cooldown. So your main spam abilities, you don't need to spam them anymore. Plus, Maul is also not part of your auto attacks anymore. It just whenever you press it, it goes instantly. That's probably one of the biggest things that will take some getting used to is not being able to just always have a Maul queued. Like, you have to make a decision when the GCD rolls around whether or not you're going to spend that GCD on a Maul or something else. It's also off the GCD. It's not on the GCD still. Oh, it's still off the GCD? So, All right. Yeah, it's still off the GCD. So you still, it costs like 50 rage to use it. So it's a very hefty, hefty one to use, but you can still use it. And it does a, a decent amount of damage depending on your vengeance stacks. But yeah, it's still off the GCD. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about the next swing for that. Lacerate gets changed to three stacks instead of five. So it stacks up a lot quicker. It's the only ability that we will have for pre-patch that's spammable. And it does a lot of damage when you do hit it. I think the, probably the biggest difference between Wrath Feral Tanking and Cata Feral Tanking is Cata Feral Tanks do way more damage than Wrath Feral Tanks do. Like it's kind And of we also do a shit ton more threat. And absorb yeah. a shitload I mean, more damage. Too. <laughs> they're, they're, it's they're, crazy how much more damage. They're so good. Like, Feral Tank is honestly... It, it, uh, the thing is, it's just fun to play. Like, I, I, I enjoy tanking as a prop pally in, uh, in Wrath, and out of all the tanks, that's about it. Uh, like, in Kata, all of the tanks are actually fun. And I think Vengeance plays a big part in that. 
Yeah, you know, like actually yeah, being able really to do synergy. a lot of damage. Like I was going to say this about the rest of section two, but like there's there's a ton of really good synergy between the the way that some of the new game mechanics work and the way that some of our talents interact with those game mechanics. Like having the the extra twenty five percent attack power from just being feral, having that synergized with vengeance is crazy. Um, so that's like it's pretty sick. One of like the like kind of fundamental differences is up until now in vanilla TBC and Wrath, um, ferals could make use of strength and agility. But for bear, agility didn't give attack power until Kata. Now agility is like the main thing for both uh, for both sides of Feral in Kata. Whereas before, agility really only gave you dodge and crit and like some bonus armor or whatever. Um, but now in Kata, it gives attack power also. So agility is the main stat for for both sides. So that's another kind of, kind of big difference. Because like in in Wrath right now, like all of the Feral tier has agility on it, and like. You know we're not really gemming for strength so like our attack power generally in in bear form in wrath right now it's kind of not great compared to what it is in cat form like you have like 10 you know over 10 that easily over 10,000 attack power unbuffed in cat form and then you go to bear form and you have like 6k <laughs> and, str like and, and strength got nerfed for, for ferals as well um in cat yeah so you, you, you a, only get one attack one one. power yeah so, so strength's like and, literally just it's not desirable at all for a feral. Yeah, but even just yeah. the the thing of of agility giving attack power to druids in bear form is huge. Like that on its own. Like even if it's only one to one, like it's still getting attack power from agility is new for bears in Kata. When we didn't we didn't used to get attack power from agility. Yeah, I think it's actually two to one in Kata for Agi. Agi, yeah, even to one. if it was only Agi's one to one, it would still be good. Yeah, they they changed because it, it was zero. <laughs> they uh, they basically changed it with the armor specializations, you, you know, to try and like yep. make clear separations between like you're a DK, you're a paladin, you're a warrior. You use plate, and it has strength on. Like you get your benefit from strength. That's why you know they they get parry from strength. Like they get a good amount of parry from strength. Um, uh, but they then removed the ability for those classes that i just mentioned to get armor or dodge from agility so they they made it so strength like is is just so much more compelling that the agility is you know you wouldn't use it and then they've done the same for druids where it's like well yeah you want agility like strength you're gonna get one attack power why would you use it that, like that's literally all you're gonna get um but yeah uh i, I would I, i'd say that, that probably about covers feral tank because me personally uh, like as i say it's really fun and vengeance makes it a lot of fun they feel quite godlike to play i gotta be honest like i i, I really do i feel pretty mm -hmm. invincible as a, as a feral tank like doing five man heroics and stuff you know like once you once you start seeing what blood dks are doing solo tanking certain bosses and completely ignoring debuffs and no need for tank swaps and stuff like that Obviously, then we'll see what Godlike really is. Um, but it just feels amazing. Going from being a bear and a five-man heroic, I, I always use five-man heroics as a um, as an example because that I think that's where bear actually shines. They shine in, in five-man heroics and they shine as the off-tank. You know, it, because in a five-man heroic, if you've got a tank, like no tank's going to do as much damage as a feral tank. Like not even, not even a, a fucking prop warrior. Like it's just not going to happen. Um, but then the ability to be like table or, or bear, but you know, like one of you is, you know, you, you're DPS in as cat. And then it's like, right, I need someone to taunt the boss for 30 seconds uh, or, you know, for 20 seconds. And you just go in bear in your full DPS gear. And then you, all right, you lose a little bit of damage, but like, it's never, it's not like, oh my God, I've got a taunt for a bit. I'm now going to be bottom DPS. Like, you know, I've been the second tank on Ragnaros and literally been in the top three DPS still. You know, it's like... Doing it, doing a few taunts here and there, and you've got bark skin ready. You've got survival instincts ready. You know whatever you need. It's it is fun. I, like druid in Catter is just. I think I'm like I I, I, I I'm hoping I'm gonna be like this when we do the mage video. Pre patch is gonna be nuts too. <laughs> like pre patch, like rap, yeah. the like, Catter pre patch is gonna be crazy because we have tier ten four piece, which gives us the the extra like damage reduction cooldown on on enrage. So we'll have Enrage, and then Survival Instincts will be changing to the 50% DR, and then we'll have Barkskin. 
So we'll have three DR cooldowns. Like, Ferals will probably be able to solo tank, like, a lot of bosses. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Frenzy Regen gets a uh, 30% health increase. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me find it in the spell book so I can like actually read because it's it's cool how they like like we our toolkit is more or less the same with like a little bit extra boost in some areas, but some of the stuff they just flipped around so that it, you get it from a different uh source. So like previously, survival instincts gave us the health bonus. Now that health bonus, it, it's a damage reduction cooldown now, and frenzy to regen used to only convert rage into health and then there was a glyph to make you take additional healing while you had it active on you but now frenzy regen is the health boost cooldown your your health is increased by 30 percent you still get um, you still get the, the glyph though you still get the glyph so so yeah, yeah you, you could you get 30 percent more health and take 30 percent more healing but uh, when i say but i think it's a positive but you don't yeah. convert the health into uh, the rage into uh health anymore which that's the worst part of the, the the ability anyway. Like you want to get rid of that, you know. Like yeah, yeah give me the, the trade off. Yeah, like, exactly. I'll take that trade all day. I, I'll take thirty percent extra on a holy paladin's divine light. Are you fucking shitting me? Like the amount of extra healing that's gonna do versus the little bit of rage I'm gonna convert into health. Like it, yeah, so yeah, it's only thirty percent HP that you get for the entire duration anyway. So it's it, it's a no brainer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's Absolutely. Why, like, for for pre patch, I 100 percent like I I am interested to see what DPSing as Feral is going to be like in pre patch. But I I really want to tank in pre patch. Like that's I already I already spoke to Goldar about it. Like I'm tanking in pre patch. <laughs> yeah. So well, I, I want to be can in give your you group. a little bit of a hint. I I can be give you a little bit of hints. DPSing for Cat is going to feel a lot worse than it does. But as soon as you start moving your stuff over from crit to mastery, it's going to feel so much better because we're oh, yeah. going to be way over crit cap. I'll, sh I'll share that. Tanking I is little... just going to be easy. I forgot to share, but I'll show you a little sheet um, later after we're done with all this. I like went through and on the sim figured out like exactly which pieces will be converted because like armor pen gets converted to crit. But if the piece of gear already had crit on it, it turns into haste instead. So like I went through the the bis like the current bis setup to see which pieces would end up with what amount of which stat, added them all up, and then figured out how much mastery we'd get <laughs> out of that from reforging literally all the crit off of every single piece of gear, reforging all of it to mastery. The one thing I'm not sure about is the mastery conversion, like how much how many how much mastery rating equals how many points of mastery at level eighty. I could find the level eighty five conversion numbers, okay, but I can't I, find I, the level eighty I, conversion I, numbers. I, I can tell you that. Yeah, I, I can okay. send you that. I, I've I've already got a, an eighty druid in full bis, um, or in cataclysm. So we, oh yeah, oh, so okay, we might right. actually be able to tank. We want we might actually be able to tank in our full DPS gear as well, because all of our tier gets more stam. So we're gonna be gaining stamina. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nuts. Uh, uh, yeah, but if you like... haven't if you haven't looked at it yet, then you should probably look at that too. I also think pre-patch haste think is would... going to be absolutely insane. Like uh, oh, yeah, on, on feral haste is going to be disgusting because you're going to get so like, feral DPS in a way is already getting a shit ton of haste just by yeah, default, just by just losing from armor all of our pen. gear getting switched from armor pen. Yeah. yeah, so like we're already going to have a fuck ton of haste. It's crazy how much haste we're going to have. Yeah, the energy regen in full yeah. bis is absolutely mental. Like it is mental. Yes, it Especially with the haste proc on DBW. Oh, that's going to be <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. nuts. It's, like, it's like a like, second we're gonna have, Yeah, we're going to have like yeah. some, of the, some of the new talents and stuff. The thing that's going to feel, it might feel a little worse just because we don't have armor pen anymore. So like it's going to feel like things aren't hitting for as hard, but we're hitting more often with everything. <laughs> so like yeah. the, the average DPS might go down a little bit, maybe, but like it's going to, if I... My prediction after having not actually played it is it probably feels more productive. But what, what you got to think about it as well way is more productive. think about the kill times now. Um, so now imagine you're going to you're going to berserk on the pool. Well, you're going to run in, use some energy, Tiger's Fury into berserk on the pool. It lasts 25 seconds. After 25 seconds, the boss is probably not that far off 25 percent where now you're just ferocious biting. You know, you're you're. Literally, by the time Berserk runs off, you're, on most bosses, you'll be in execute phase already. 
It's gonna be honestly, be it's gonna be so mental. All of our, all the bites will be crits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And in cap form, you're gonna have up to 120 energy as well because if you use some Tiger Sphere, which doesn't give you 60, it gives you 80 actually. Yeah. And currently some... testing it, giving you 80. I've seen some weird stuff, like some theory crafting that they were doing in the Druid disc about how like it might be like unless unless you can drain fully drain your energy by the end of it when you lose the extra 20 energy um it's it can end up like throwing a wrench in things supposedly i didn't read too much into it but like i was like oh, i guess that makes sense i i read mm. it they're right they're right so you want to try and Unless drain you... energy before you lose the extra 20 basically right because it so currently on the beta it's kind of giving like a static amount so it like drops down and then goes back up so you're during that half second where it drops down you're actually lose the 20 energy it's yeah. currently so it's acting it. super weird what did so i say about not digging away... into the details tonight sorry, boys sorry. i said it before you, we even you knew started what was gonna happen. you had me and bear on the same podcast <laughs> you know what's gonna happen well no we are a hundred percent gonna do a part two of this but like like we have to because we have to get into a lot, a lot, a, like a lot more place. detail. No, you're good. Well, you know, I forgot that Go was here. I got to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I've been chilling. <laughs> um, uh, look, I, I think that's I've enough, been... Feral. Let's move on to Resto because, as I say, what would be nice <laughs> is to do a nice, a nice overview uh, of everything. You know, like we've still got glyphs that I'd like us to look at. Um, we've looked at talents already, which was the next topic. Um, and then I said we'll go into each spec in more detail. So I think we can keep this to two hours, um, and then we we do the other episode, like uh, the second part of it, where we really start going into the detail on in all the specs. And it gives everyone a few days to go away and 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 look at anything they want, draft up some notes and stuff. So like this is a good, you know. But otherwise, we're gonna sit here for like five six hours, and there's just gonna be too much information for anyone to try and take in. Um, and I want to go and raid and get pissed. Uh, so <laughs> let, let's move on to Resto. But I mean, like, I could talk Druid for days. Like, honestly, it, 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 all the specs are so involved. Uh, but let's have let's have Table open us up a bit for uh, yeah, Resto talents, like key changes. Right. So there's there's a couple of key changes. We already talked about the tree life thing. We already talked about that. Um, Revitalize is different now. It's much higher up in the tree, like you can get it sooner. Um, and the way that Revitalize worked up until this point was your uh, Rejuven Wild Growth had a chance to refund resources uh, to the people that were that had the hot on them. But now instead, it's just another source of replenishment. So when you have, um, when you cast or refresh Life Bloom specifically, you give uh, replenishment. So they just kind of wrap that in with with all of all that stuff so that's one of the one of the changes um a cool addition to the tree like brand new for kata is uh uh how do we how do you say this effer efflorescence yeah, is that the, how you say it yeah. yeah 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 um so efflorescence when you use swift mend uh on a target a bunch of flowers sprout around them and do an aoe heal around the person that you use swift mend on so it's really good for like melee healing especially if you're going to toss a swift mend on the tank or something like that um, you can AoE heal the melee using that, which is pretty nice. Just kind of like extra healing that you were probably going to do anyway, and that's probably your job anyway. So it just makes it easier to do your job, which is pretty nice. It's good when you um, see absolute dickheads move out of it because they're like, oh, what am I stood in? And they move out of it. It's like, oh, come on, are you joking? And people do that with healing rain as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the new spell effects that people aren't used to yet. Um, we are, we talked about Fury of the Storm Rage a little bit already. That's a new thing for Kata. People who play Sod are kind of familiar with Fury of the Storm Rage. Um, it's similar, not quite the same. It's just the making Wrath free is the similar part of it. But in Kata, instead of it being a chance to give you an instant healing touch, instead it gives you an instant Starfire. Um, there is the thing that Scott was talking about before about rolling uh, Life Bloom on the tank and then having it be automatically refreshed. That's from a talent called Empowered Touch. Um, your uh, Healing Touch, Regrowth, and Nourish give you a 100% chance to refresh the duration of Life Bloom when you have two points in the talent. And that talent also increases the healing done by, the, by that direct healing. So 
that's uh, a nice little extra thing that you get because like it's i don't know life bloom has had this like kind of weird like history of usage from tbc to wrath now to kata where like in tbc you just you can continuously refresh it on the tank and never let it bloom uh in tbc and then in wrath now you only use it for uh for mana regen and then in kata it you're stacking it to three one time and then constantly refreshing it throughout the fight so it's like life bloom has had this kind of weird place in the druid toolkit that has continuously changed over time and it's uh you know it's it's going to continue going that way <laughs> it's, it's what it looks like uh, and the, uh, the, the, the nice the thing as well tokens. is it with, with that is how you know like healing touch and nourish like like regrowth is obviously expensive but very effective and like you almost want to be using as many regrowths as possible when you've got clear casts um instead of like in raf at the moment where you'd use life bloom on a clear cast uh but you've got your like most healers get the same thing where you've got your sort of quick in inexpensive heal that doesn't do a lot or a nice slow big heal that costs a lot and then paladin's got a, a mix of all of them you know with like flash of light being really expensive but does a decent amount um but for a druid you know it's like you're more or less using nourish to refresh life bloom a little bit of spot healing with nourish you know you, you know you're not going to get any big numbers from it and then healing touches like shit like need a, a a decent sized heal um but the the keeping life bloom on the target is just it's so satisfying like it, it, yeah. as someone who enjoys healing as a resto druid like it just is satisfying you know you'll see the difference between a good and a bad healer will be who had to cast life bloom more than the other one it's like if, you, if you're letting it drop off and then you, you that's that's three gcds you've now got to use to get it stacked up again whereas if you can play around it and never let it drop you know your mana efficiency your output like everything's just going to be so much better uh, sorry table i just wanted to throw it in yeah big time but this is this is all the stuff that i meant when i was saying that like the the that there's a lot of really good like synergy talents um that go along really really well like how we're talking with feral with you know having bonus attack power and that interacting with vengeance it's it's a very similar thing with a lot of these resto towns interacting with the hots and the way that resto druids want to heal anyway and the way that we have been being utilized i said we oh my god i actually am a resto druid now um, <laughs> i told you but like <laughs> <laughs> holy shit um but yeah the way that that, that druids have been utilized in raids um the whole way through is like it's being reinforced now where it was like it seems like before blizzard was trying to be like no any healer can do anything you just have to like spec for it right or whatever now blizzard is basically be like no every healer can do anything everything but some of the healers are very good at one specific thing druids are really good at blanket raid heals um and they're really good at um at just maintaining their mana like they're really really mana efficient when you really get going with stuff because once you get into the swing of things like you're almost never um like i've i don't think i even back in the day i don't think i ever saw a wrestler druid use their own innervate on themselves they were always innervating somebody else because they didn't need it because they were just really mana efficient the whole time um so yeah. dru druids have been just a really solid they're like kind of like i would describe them a wrestler druid as like a really really good wrestler druid is like the backbone of your of your healing team because they're healing everybody at all all the time and it frees up the other healers to to focus on specific people in the raid that need a little bit of extra healing or to like help set up cooldown windows or whatever like without that baseline of the druids blanket heals all the other healers feel it for sure like if your wrestler druid has to you know can't make it to a raid one night all the other healers feel it for sure yeah yeah i, I completely agree it, it, you can you can do some pretty good things as a resto dread but I, I think like all the healers are in a good spot in in kata and the like it, willie you know i was on the podcast on warcraft reloaded just before this and you know will is going um priest he's going this priest in kata when he's been warlock for uh, well, well since vanilla uh, since yeah 2019 classic um and it's because of how healers heal healing doesn't actually feel like you're just looking at health bars and spamming like heals to just make sure they never ne never die and i know this sounds strange but bear with me you know like a bit whack-a-mole where you just it don't, like you don't worry about a mana bar it's like i'll just get an innovate from go like i'll just spam whatever i want i've got i've got a potion i've got a personal cooldown where i can get my mana up you know like 
mana is kind of irrelevant as a healer. If you're going oom to the point where you're wiping in wrath, your your healers are probably naked or doing something pretty special. Whereas in Kata, it's so punishing if you fall behind. Like that that's that's more how yeah, probably the best way to say it is if you fall behind where you feel like shit, this is starting to spiral out of control. While you've got it's control. A lot more pro proactive than reactive. Exactly. Like the current way that a lot of healers have been healing is reactive, but Disc Priest and Wrath was really when it started the when proactive healing really started. Um, yeah. I guess you could make a case for like, oh, rest of druids were stacking life bloom to three, but like that's not. I don't. I don't think I would count that as proactive healing because you're just going to roll that same stack the whole time, regardless of what happens in the fight. Whereas in wrath, you'd see you see disc priest like pre shielding the raid before a mechanic. That's proactive healing. And in Kata, all the healers need to proactively heal. So like, say you have like a like a holy priest who's about to cast like a circle or something like that. Like they're preparing for that AOE damage that goes out to immediately have that healing go out as soon as the raid damage happens. It's the same thing with all the other healers. Like they're they you have to know the fights and you have to know your class to be really good at raiding in, in Kata. And that's part of the difficulty spike is up until this point you could kind of get by without early knowing the fight as long as you knew your class and you could react well enough but like in Kata, you have to have the fight knowledge too in order to actually succeed whereas whereas right now it's like you have to have the fight knowledge to parse well in Kata, you need the fight knowledge to succeed baseline well we like a, a prime example would be um like on the on the last private server we was on uh like, like the same two healers so we're not talking like different players we're not even talking different raid team like more or less the same raid team maybe one or two people different on a weekly basis you know we went from like struggling to fuck on mana on nefarian you know like literally you know me and me and uh, me and mcnulty had less problems together but like if it was me and another healer yeah it would be a struggle you know we'd be like halfway through phase two and be like fucking hell like need innovate i got mana potions on cooldown like what what am i gonna do and it went from that to to really easing in to the new style of uh, of healing you know bearing in mind while i was healing nefarian at the same time i was playing a holy pally in Alduar, spamming holy light and like a turret and nothing else you know, so I had to change my mindset where it was like, right, no, I need to be more methodical. I need to, I can't afford to waste a big divine light. Like, I can't try and snipe a hill from someone else just to look better on the meters. It's like, if they're already casting, let them finish. I can see that they're casting. I can see where it's going. Uh, so let, let them finish that. And I've, I'll save my mana. I'll keep my MP5 ticking away. You know, like, you do need to be less worried about i'm gonna try and snipe every heal i can with really quick heals and more like no let's like let the healing team work together and if they've got that covered let a, a prime example would be a resto druid which is actually the perfect time to drop this in let the resto druids hots do their work you know if you can see that there's three or four people with rejuve and wild growth on them why even waste the heal you know if you know there's no damage coming in just let them tick away and you can stand there and do nothing um it, it, it's you you need to be in a, a a different mindset and you know as i say mcnault is in chat and as someone who i know has healed all this content either with me or, and, and without me um i'm sure i'd agree that it, you, you do just need to be less selfish it, it's less like i need to get all these heals let people play to their strengths i think the difference is and you even you said you started i was gonna drop it in but i you know was i wanted to let you finish to what you were saying you said stand there and do nothing but in Kata, you don't. In Kata, you damage. Yeah, 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 like you, exactly. And, and you've, you'll have a free way of doing damage. As a, as a, a Resto Shaman, you'll be casting Lightning Bolts that's giving you mana back. As a as a uh, Dis Priest, you, you'll obviously just be doing damage. As a Resto Druid, if you did have Malfurion's Gift, you could be stood there spamming Wraths um, or, or, or setting, yeah, Blanket Hots up or whatever. As a Paladin, I, I'm, I'm very... Uh, as a as a like playing a holy paladin in raids in uh, like Bastion Twilight Blackwing Descent Firelands, I'll put myself in an interrupt rotation as the healer. It's like, well, I, I know I'm up in melee using Crusader Strike, getting mana back, using Judgment. Like, I might as well be on the interrupt rotation, and then a DPS can just focus on what they're doing. You know, it's like as a healer, you can almost take on as much responsibility or as little responsibility as you want in Kata, which is another thing I really like about healing. Yeah, I think that's one of the coolest things about Kata in general is that the I can't remember what I remember reading an interview about this from back in the day 
couldn't find it anywhere. But one of the design philosophies that the dev team had when they were figuring out how they were going to do everything for Kata was making healing more fun. And sometimes it's fun to just heal a bunch of people for a bunch because they took a bunch of damage. Sometimes it's fun. But when the raid gets good at avoiding avoidable damage and the tanks are not re like requiring that much healing, healing gets really boring. Or like your example where you're just spamming holy light like a turret on your paladin for three raids. Uh, like that's not fun after a while. That gets boring after a while. So like being able to contribute towards damage in either off time or when people don't require as much healing or even as a way to regain mana, like that sort of thing, like a little bit more of an interactive play style is good for the game. And we're seeing some of that in SOD right now. Like a lot of the healers, like the healing capable classes in SOD right now are doing some mix of damage and healing at the same time. And that's a lot closer to the Kata healing style than the Wrath or vanilla healing style. So if you're playing side mm -hmm. right now and you're thinking about healing in Kata, like, you know, you're you're kind of easing yourself in without even knowing about it. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that is a really good point. Do we have time for glyphs really quick or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do glyphs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm 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 in the raid. Like, yeah, yeah, let's still do an invites and stuff. There's uh so uh, again, even if I go and do Maragar, like Golder, I'll be cool. Like, we've, we've, we've got time. So what about Tranquility? What Like, there was a change to Tranquility. Does no one know what the change is? Um, the yeah. Change. I think it's raid-wide, right? Uh, no, no, it's still... It's, it's the, it it's, raid it's the raid-wide, wide, but it's only five part. It's, sorry, back on. It's a smart heal, though, right? Yeah, it's a smart heal. It's, it's only smart five people. Heal. Five people, but you no longer have to cast bark skin before you actually press it because it does have a hundred percent spell pushback. Oh, okay. So you, okay. That's yeah, that's good. So it could be used for a raid cooldown from every druid in the is raid. It just, do you have to talent in the pushback or is it baseline? It's baseline. Oh, that's sick. So then you could even, if you if you really need <laughs> like a trank rotation or whatever, your non your non resto druids could get in on that too. Yeah, it's baseline, so everybody gets that one hundred percent spell pushback from tranquility, and it's a smart heal too. So if you need that extra healing, you got it. Yeah, yeah pretty, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, a good change, and it's insane. As I say, that there's certain fights um, where like rotating these cooldowns properly like goes a long long way, and I know. Like we have it on some fights in Wrath, you know. But then when you when you really think about Wrath, like even if you thought about ICC, um, like the, the, most fights, like the, you, you might use a D sack now and again, you know, at certain times. But that's about it. Whereas in in uh, in um, I'd say more Firelands, maybe more more so than Bastion of Twilight. No, actually, no. Nefarian's a good example in Blackwing Descent. Where more or less, like you want a cooldown for every ten percent of Nefarian's health, you know, you you want something, um, and you, you everybody's got something useful now. You know, a warrior with rally and cry, you know, it's thirty percent more health, like for everyone. Uh, yeah, having Trank, having Tree of Life, having oh, I mean, when we get to the priest, it's going to be amazing. You know, with like their bubble, uh, there's there's so much that you can now actually. The, the raids are harder, but if you manage cooldowns properly, they're not. The, you know, the raids are built around the fact that everybody has now got this sort of utility. You know, like Bear said with Trank, yeah, no pushback. It's like, so yeah, okay, you're a, you're a, you're a feral druid, great, but like get involved in the fucking, you know, in the raid cooldowns. Like mm -hmm. pair it with with a damage reduction cooldown, or or pair it with a health increase cooldown from a warrior. You know, like yeah. It, it, the guilds that manage raid cooldowns will be the guilds that, that do well. Because I think it's needed more in Kata than anywhere else. Because shit fucking does hit hard. Like, uh, like raid-wide hits hard. A lot of the AoE that... Yeah. Yeah, raiding as a druid in Kata, like, there's a lot more opportunities to use more of your toolkit, which is really cool. Like, there's, there's definitely ways where you can not do that and just focus on one thing. But if, you know, if, if you want to be able to help with handling mechanic in some way and your tool in like our toolkit is well suited to be extremely versatile when it comes to dealing with uh with raid mechanics and stuff and so being able to contribute towards that definitely feels good 
but also if you really want to just focus damage like sometimes it doesn't feel good to have to do that stuff but if you you know if you're having trouble with the fight and you succeed at the fight because of something that you did because your toolkit allowed it that feels good too <laughs> yeah and overall uh i mean yeah mana tide's still there and innovate's still there innovate's not quite as useful um as it is currently in wrath but when you said totem i instantly thought about spirit link like spirit link totem for shaman is uh that's that's a that probably the strongest cooldown in the game to be fair spirit link is absolutely bonkers it takes everybody's health and redistributes it uh, uh, across everyone like it is a bonkers raid cooldown um but yeah the problem with innovate which we've not really touched on it so we can um is innovate uh, like on a as a boomy as a boomy um like go will appreciate the fact that he can if he innovates himself it's amazing because like if he takes i can't remember the name of the talent eh, dream state it's okay <laughs> well if you take dream state you're you're innovate you do an additional 30 percent of your total mana you know so like you, you like an innovate on yourself is really strong an innovate on yourself as a resto druid uh let me just pull it up on screen uh is it's the, really strong on the bounce route is like 95 percent of your mana bar <laughs> yeah 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 it's, it's it's crazy um so yeah causes the target to regenerate five percent maximum mana five percent is nothing but if you cast it on yourself uh you regenerate an additional 15 percent. so so as a resto druid you put it on yourself you get 20 percent mana you put it on someone else they get five you know it's like it's not worth innovating another healer if you can make use of that mana because 20 percent of your mana is going to be far more output than five percent of someone else's assuming that you're you're geared and you, you know what you're doing but that brings us nicely onto glyphs i'd say because there we, we can even start with glyph of innovate so when you when innovate is cast on a friendly target other than the caster the caster will get 10 percent of the maximum mana over 10 seconds so you you can glyph it and actually make it useful to put on somebody else uh, and it is only a major glyph yeah i think that's probably probably where it makes more sense to start is for anybody that didn't catch any of the previous uh cata talks or anything like that there's made uh, there's prime glyphs and major glyphs and minor glyphs now instead of just major and minors there's a third level of glyph now it's it essentially works a similar way to the current glyph system in wrath it's just one uh one layer on top of that so like the prime glyphs are the huge impact ones major glyphs are still good but they're not like directly going to impact your damage or healing in most cases and then minor glyphs are usually just like convenient stuff so yeah like the glyph innervate is a regen thing affecting only one cooldown so that's a major glyph it's too strong to be a minor, but it's not strong enough to be a prime glyph. So, like, that's a yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was kind of it was kind of weird. They so j just for another history lesson, um, because I, I mate, I, I fucking show my age and how long I've played this game for, or or maybe just how much I've read bullshit online when I could have been looking at porn. Um, but this was a last minute addition to Cat. You know the the prime glyphs, major glyphs, and minor glyphs uh, was a uh, like oh shit, we haven't finished the game. We need to get it out because it was originally going to be the path of the titans, where you yeah you you aligned with a titan and then depending on what you was whether you was a tank, a DPS, or a healer, you you know you got certain almost like hero talent type things of what they're doing now. Um, so uh, but because they couldn't get that system finished in time or they just gave up on it or whatever they done um yeah they 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 went with this and uh, uh, man it is kind of a little gripe of mine with kata it is so it's such a lazy system <laughs> you know it's like we, we already have major and minor glyphs to then add prime glyphs which basically prime glyphs are now major glyphs of what we've currently got in wrath and then minor glyphs are the same and like i don't know it, it weren't that it's not amazing is it it's not like we're going into the next expansion with like a, a, a new shiny system or even an improved system it's just more like a regurgitated yeah like a lot of glyphs that are right now major glyphs ended up becoming prime glyphs some have like a bit of a name change like currently like the current glyph of shred in wrath is the one that extends the duration of your rip when you shred the target. Now it's called Glyph of Bloodletting, but 
it's the same thing, but now also mangle can uh, can increase the duration as well as shred. So it's like it still does the same thing. Glyph of Berserk does the same thing, except for I think is it Wrath Glyph of Berserk? Isn't it only five second increase to the duration of yeah. Berserk? Yeah, and then it but goes the up to ten. ten seconds. Uh, there's other stuff like uh, Glyph of Mangle still increases the the damage of Mangle. Uh, Glyph of Regrowth is different now. Glyph of Regrowth in uh, in Wrath, it is a stronger heal if the Regrowth is already on the target. But now, Regrowth's heal over time will automatically refresh its duration on targets at or below 50% HP. So that's like a pretty fundamental change to the way that Glyph works. Um, I, I suppose, just, just, just cut, I just want to cut you off just for one second. Uh, I suppose the good thing is, though, with the glyph system is that uh, it is more like a collections tab now you know where it's not like yeah 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 well once you've got the, you glyph, learn the once... glyph one time and then you can apply it instead yeah. of needing to buy a bunch of the glyph yeah so i uh, like that that is really good don't get me wrrong you need dust of disappearance you know to be able to swap them in and in and out but you do yeah it's something else to collect it's like even if it's a glyph that you don't think you're ever going to use it's like well i i want every i want all of my glyphs the same way you might want all of your runes yeah. in season of discovery like a completionist activity yeah yeah exactly and i know it's not like it's not a big completionist activity but it's still you know i'm looking at i'm looking at these and i'm like man why why am i missing glyphs but then i look at them and i'm like yeah i wouldn't use that shit but in classic <laughs> yeah. in classic i would want them um but yeah, all right. Well, let's, so you've you've already touched on some of the glyphs anyway. Um, That's kind of the, the main basis, though. Is like all, all of these prime glyphs all directly affect a damage or healing ability in a significant way. Like that's kind of the whole shtick with prime glyphs. Like they directly impact what you're doing. Um, m major glyphs do little extra things that are nice, but it's not like super noticeable if you don't have them. Like a good example is the innervate glyph um another example is like glyph of hurricane uh it slows the movement speed of people in its radius by 50 percent like not a huge deal but like it's cool you know uh glyph of frenzied region another example this one i there could be a case for making it a prime glyph because it's it's really yeah, strong it's a big glyph. Frenzied, it's the same it's a big glyph keep it keep it the way it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, it's nice to be able to still have it because it's only a major glyph, but like I would have totally understood if it was a prime glyph because it's a really strong. It's basically the same. It's the same way that Frenzied Regen glyph works in Wrath right now. When you have Frenzied Regen on yourself, you get you get 30% 30, 30 more healing taken um, from outside heals, which is fucking great. Glyph of Focus. Yeah, that's, uh, the that's one the that one I'm highlighting does. at the moment. I, I, I wanted to talk about that next because the, the funny thing is with these glyphs is like the major glyphs on the most part shouldn't increase DPS. You know, like uh, there's, there's the outliers and focus is one of those outliers. Yeah. Where, yeah. So the glyph of focus works similarly to the glyph of starfall where it's reduced radius, but increased damage on starfall. So it's, it's interesting what some of these effects are. Wowhead has Glyph of Omen of Clarity listed under major glyphs, but we still aren't sure if that's staying in the game or if that, it stays in go. the game, whether it's... Yeah, it's, I don't think it'll gone. stay. Um, but, but yeah, if, if for some reason they had decided to keep it in, like I don't know why they would only have that as a, as a, as a major glyph. I would have thought that they would have made that a prime glyph. It will be, it'll be shown as a major glyph because it's a major glyph in Wrath. Right. But it, that, that, that will go. Like, that would be ridiculous. Although, I tell you what, and I tell you now, I've spent a lot of gold, a lot of time uh, on on my mage getting ready for Kata. But if the Hand of Reckoning glyph stays in for Rhett, I am staying Rhett for Kata. Uh, you heard it here first. Oh, jeez. No, nice. they're getting they're gonna get rid of all of them. All oh, yeah, of, co of course they so. of course they will. They would mess with the balance way too much. Oh well, um, Rhett would be broken. One... Um, a super interesting one, which is something that is like a, a situational glyph that feral bears use right now, glyph of maul in wrath. It's just straight up cleaves. It's just an extra. It just hits another target for the same amount of damage. In kata, glyph of maul still hits one additional target, but it's for fifty percent damage instead of full damage. So there's like slight differences. Um, with this, and some of these are like completely reworked, like glyph of thorns, for example, glyph of thorns in wrath just increases the duration of thorns when you cast it on yourself 
because it's a buff. It's just a persistent buff in Wrath. But in Kata, it's a cooldown. So in Kata, the Glyph of Thorns reduces the cooldown of Thorns by 20 seconds. So like little stuff like that. So they, these major glyphs are sort of like they do affect your abilities in like a you know pretty significant way, but it's not like such a huge way that like is you know like you can definitely go without them and not notice it too much or you can these are the ones that i would think that the major glyphs are the ones that you swap around situationally depending on what the fight is whereas your prime glyphs you're probably gonna keep those equipped all the time yeah yeah absolutely and i, I feel like some classes have done a lot better with glyphs than others as well you know like i do i do look at things like warrior glyphs and i find them incredibly boring you know, where it's like 5% more damage with Blood First, 5% more damage with yeah. Mortal Strike, 5 like, they're bad. Sorry, go, go on. This is the first time you spoke no, for, I, I, for two days, so crack <laughs> on. I'm going to go and get a drink. I feel like that's the same with Boomy, though. It's like, yeah, we've got Glyph of Wrath, and Wrath's damage increased by 10%. Like, cool. And we've got Glyph of Moonfire, Insect Swarm, and uh, Starfire. It's buffing our dots. Like, cool. But we we do have two decent major glyphs though, like you guys touched on. Focus, pretty good one, increases Starfall's damage, and then Glyph of Starfall, reducing the cooldown from a minute and a half down to a minute. That's always a a good glyph for for mm. boomies to have. That minute Starfall cooldown is sick. And then yeah, the minor glyphs. I don't even remember what minor glyphs there are. There's like Glyph of Typhoon they're, for Boomy. Like, they're pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, Unburd and Rebirth is just a must in it. Let's be fair. You're not going to run without that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No druid should. I think, Go, something that I'm curious about from your like your perspective on it. So I was like the the Glyph of Star Surge that increases uh, or that reduces the remaining cooldown on Starfall every time you cast Star Surge. With that sort of tying in with Glyph of Starfall and Glyph of Focus, do you think that that's going to be like a go-to option that most balanced druids are going to go with? I think that we have to wait until we're in Lunar, so it might just be a, a moot glyph if we spec into it, and then we just have to wait 10 seconds to get into Lunar anyways. It's like, I don't I don't see us really using Star Surge glyph. I think it's a, a toss-up between, like, Wrath, uh, Insect Swarm, Moonfire. Or it's Wrath, Insect Swarm, Starfire. It's one of those combinations there i think you'll, you'll definitely run starfire yeah like 100 percent run starfire yeah yeah um but yeah so, star surge yeah i i it, it's a bit of a red herring really because you like go said you, you're not going to want to use starfall out of out of out of eclipse so unless you're getting oh, to yeah, the star eclipse Church state a... faster Star Search has a 15 second cooldown also. Like, jeez. Yeah, but it, you could get the free ones, the free mm, cast. Yeah. Like, the it resets the cooldown on it and makes it instant cast from talents. Oh, so that's just RNG then. Yeah, so that's not even reliable. Like, if, if you had the glyph for it, like, you're you're mm -hmm. relying on the RNG of how many Star Searches you're actually going to get out. And, like, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, like you said, waiting till the right phase. Mm, it's like yeah. if we use two Star Surges in a minute and we've reduced the cooldown by 10 seconds, then. Is that going to matter? I don't know. Uh, I, I probably not. Yeah, I don't remember using Star Surge a great deal, but I, I was, I done a lot of boomy on Apollo three or Apollo two, one, one, one or the other. Not sure which server it was. Um, and I don't remember using Star Surge, but yeah, Starfire, a hundred percent. I'm sure it was like Starfire, Moonfire, Insect Swarm. I mean, it was literally them There's three. A... The war main article I have up, there's a couple of sources I've looked at for glyphs, and this one says Moonfire, Insect Swarm, and then the third slot is either Wrath or Star Surge. So oh, like moon, I, Moonfire, I, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, again, I, I think we, we could sit and we can sit and speculate as much as we want, but until we actually start to get some proper data, some like decent sims and uh, yeah. We're just fucking guessing, aren't we, at the end of the day? <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of the glyphs changed in interesting ways so that it's not like it's not as obvious of a choice anymore which ones you're going to go with. Like, there are some like super obvious choices, but there's like, you know, there's probably maybe one or two super obvious choices. And then usually the second or third one is either going to be situational or it's going to depend on what your stats are like at the time like a, a there might be like a couple of glyphs that are bis early on but then another glyph 
ends up being better later on, depending on how your how your stats scale and everything like that. So it's just interesting. It's more more of an interesting choice. Also, like the fact that so so many of them are changed and new is just interesting, just because things are different now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like figuring out the new meta is gonna is always gonna be interesting. What's neat for the, uh, the <laughs> sorry major go glyphs. go just one second and then go. Did, when he said new meta, did you want to go new meta? New meta. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I saw Sully in chat earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every time I see the word just meta anywhere, I'm like, yep, new meta. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like Glyph of Rebirth, I never really took in Wrath. And I know a lot of Bounce Druids did because it would help on prog. But Rebirth, uh, players resurrected by Rebirth are now returned to life with 100% health. And it looks like that's going to be an option for me now. It's like I could run Starfall, Focus, and Rebirth and not feel shit for taking it. Yeah. Uh, but like, and then like on some points you might what want to you take, were like saying, Solar table. Beam instead or something. Though, so some of them are like really interested. You're like reducing the cooldown of Feral Charge. That doesn't sound big, but like if there is a heavy ad fight where you're having to move away from the boss, you know, that two seconds or, or one second, depending on what form you're in, could be big. Ferocious bite, just getting some passive healing. You know, if it's a heavy healing fight, um, as a as a, a feral cat, you know, every time you're ferocious bite, in which at less than twenty five percent, when shit could start to get scary, you're just doing some passive healing is nice. Uh, like it, it, bark skin, mm, not so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but there is. There's. <laughs> I looked at that. I was like, ah, fuck that. Uh, but no, there, there's a lot of them that are just situationally good i think you'll i i agree actually a hundred percent what table said I, I think major glyphs are going to be the one that you're ones that you're changing fight by fight whereas prime it's like they're the three that my spec uses anything after talents or glyphs i forget i thought there was one more thing or that was we were going to save the rest for the next show yeah 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 we can then get more deep into stuff i reckon in in the next episode which if if everybody's happy to come back on wednesday right yeah. we can we can then really yeah, start yeah. going go like have a good hour looking at each spec properly we can like go away and yeah, like you know have a look at exactly what we want to discuss and then yeah go even deeper I, I, like we're not going to have to do this for every class. As I say, tonight being a, a little bit limited on time and and Druid having a lot to talk about. Like if we can if we can do it in two, I think that would be yeah, that would be useful. Jack of all trades. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, and it was a great overview. Anyway, let's be fair. Like for for anyone who has no idea about anything about Druid going into Kata, like that was probably a lot of information. <laughs> Yeah, we we didn't even touch on the leather specialization either. Oh, you mean the leather doesn't work? Touch on that now if you want. (laughs) You get uh, 5% of your your main stat. So for Boomy, I'd get 5% extra intellect, uh, which you can train at level 50. So as long as I'm wearing all leather gear, I don't have any cloth equipped, then I'll get that 5% bonus intellect. And then for ferals, it's what, agility? Yeah, it's Agi for Ferals, which yeah. uh, works currently on the beta, by the way. Lucky. Wild. <laughs> I think it's also Int for, um, for Resto. Resto, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because that's... Uh, GT mentioned it earlier. It's like right now in Wrath, if you have some cloth pieces as Resto or Balance Druid, because it's your, your bis for Wrath, it's probably not going to be your bis come pre-patch when you have the option to get 5% extra intellect which is going to give us spell power so keep an eye on that that uh that leather gear that you might have just been letting get de'd in your raids like pick it up save it i feel like the armor specialization uh thing is going to affect uh boomies and restos and all of the other melee way more than it's going to affect feral because ferals are already wearing all leather yeah but like warriors and hunters and shamans have like at least a couple of pieces of leather in their bis um and boomies and restos have uh some cloth pieces in their in their bis so like all that stuff is going to affect everybody else way more than it's going to affect feral 
Holy Paladins too. Holy I was Paladins thinking like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Holy, yeah. Holy, yeah. Holy, Holy Paladins big time. Yeah, uh, I use more, probably more cloth than plate. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, All right. So if you don't play a druid, then definitely start thinking about that stuff. <laughs> Get ready for yeah. pre patch. Make sure you got all your stuff lined up. Well, I, I, I as I say, I think that was a uh, that was a good a good part one. I would have liked to have sat here all night. As I say, it's completely my fault. I, I forgot that I signed up to a GDKP. I, I, I kind of wish I didn't, but at the same time, I really want the gold because Cat is not that far away, and I want <laughs> I want to go in stacked. Uh, so. Thank you, every everyone, all, all three of you, and I hope that we can all make it back for Wednesday, and we'll really start digging into all three specs. Yeah, for, for as many hours as you want. I'll make no plans on Wednesday. I promise. Uh, I, I have anyway. plans on Wednesday, so. Um, uh, any time you can or can't make, or just flat out can't make Wednesday. No, I um. Well, I can make like for a few hours because I don't read till. Oh, oh, yeah, like, that's fine. Three and a half hours. Well, we'll just yeah, three we'll, and a half hours should be fine. We'll just knock feral out first, then. So we'll we'll yeah. do yeah. We'll we'll do feral first, and then if it ends up, yeah, that's fine. Um, this just wipes. Um, yeah. Like do... I'm raiding with Bobby at nine on Wednesday. Nine. So we're nine gonna... my time. Yeah, that's. Three hours, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll yeah, do we'll do it. feral first, and then literally, if it ends up with just me and go, and we're talking about balance and resto, like that's fine. But I reckon, I reckon in three hours we should be able to get through feral and resto. I think, and then if if we just leave balance, I'm pretty sure me and go between us can talk about balance for a couple of hours to cover that. Yeah, I'll, I'll find a balance for me to to join us once they leave. All right, cool. Yep. I need a, a feathered friend in here with me. All right. Sounds good to me. Um, well, obviously, thanks, guys. Do you want to just go around and shout out where people can find you? I, I will put all your details in the description anyway. YouTube.com slash at Classic Go. I can't um, believe level, you like, went the beta. Uh, What a disgusting I tried, person. dude. I let like 10 we're seconds like, elapse. It's like a Canadian standoff. We were all waiting for each other. You know? <laughs> I picked up my drink so they would be like, oh, he's not going to talk and say his thing first. But no, I'm uh, leveling on the, the I was going to say the meta right now. I'm leveling on the beta. New meta. Uh, level 61. So I, I might stream for a couple hours tonight here and try to get at least 65. I'm I'm struggling to get through these levels, but I'm I'm doing it. Okay. Uh, sucks. Uh, let, let's let's go with let's go with Bearbis. Where where can they find you? So currently, I am just streaming on YouTube at uh, youtubecom slash at Bearbis, and then Twitch is twitchcom slash Threatber. It's a B U R for the end. Um, I'm working on getting my kick up and going, so that's going to be a little bit kick kick fam. Rise up, let's go. Uh, table. Yeah. Where can where can where can I find you? I'm on YouTube at YouTube YouTube dot clam. The holy shit! YouTube dot clam. Slash, you clam. You clam dot. Somebody still clam. clam. Yeah, right. YouTube dot com slash at table slam and Twitch Twitch dot TV slash table underscore slam. Cool. And if you want to see me doing a terribly bad drunken GDKP right now on kick.com slash Scotty J, that's where you can find me because A, I, that's one, isn't it? I should have said one, I'm going to be getting drunk. Two, I'm going to be GDKP. <laughs> nice. uh, I thought you were going A. Hey, but either way, I'm going to be enjoying myself. Um, so cool. Thanks, guys. We'll reconvene on Wednesday. Anybody who's been watching, if you've enjoyed us talking about Druid, we will be continuing this Druid conversation on, on Wednesday. I will bid you all a farewell. And uh, for those who are watching on Kick, I'll be live again in literally two minutes.